<laughs> what up, brother? What's what's up? What's up? I know you oh, are you you done met the, the false prophet. You, oh you, god. You you done met Jason already. So yeah. <laughs> the false prophet. <laughs> that is powerful, brother. That yeah, is powerful. He's he's still working on making it in. <laughs> he's, 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 he's trying to make it into heaven. Yeah, yeah. There's too much evidence on him. For judgment, though. There's too much evidence. He gotta he gotta get a clean. He gotta get some stuff fixed up. So the real question is, since y'all are triplets, does that mean you going with him? Oh no no, that's not how that go. That's not how that go. No no no. Uh uh-uh. uh. See uh see I. Nah, you about to have me like <laughs> Hey man. Joseph made it in. His brothers, I mean, did they uh, see I'm not even about to blaspheme. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Where is you at that with all that that sunlight? Hey man. I'm in my I'm in my apartment complex, but you You're still where? in Chicago, right? Nah. No I'm in Oklahoma. Okay. I moved oh three years God. ago for Transformation Church. You Transformation Church in Oklahoma. Tulsa, okay. Oklahoma. Yeah, the most you, random place in life. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the that's the home of every night's a lightning storm. Let me tell you something. It's been a struggle. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thought Chicago was bad, bro. Now the good thing about Tulsa is they only get it during the spring. Every okay. other day is just like this. Every day. Ooh. Okay. So yeah. that's the that's the beautiful thing about it. Like it's always clear, it's always sunlight like but during the spring for about 3 weeks, maybe a month. Yeah, hell is raising. <laughs> yeah, that mean that mean that mean transformation go out to transform and move somewhere else. They go that Child time honey, like during, hush, okay. during the spring Transformation Church gonna have to go like to come come back to Chicago. Shoot. <laughs> come back to Chicago. Bruh, let me tell you something. <laughs> it's always beautiful, but you know when it's about to storm. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. That just see God just gave it to me. Uh oh. Oklahoma City Thunder. They were warning everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they were warning everybody. That's that's it. That's it. Like we Forget this, man. <laughs> Can't be surprised that Oklahoma. They, that gave, they gave you the funny. blueprint. I cannot take it. That is hilarious, <laughs> bro. That's kind of powerful. You you might want to. You know, I can't see. It's already. Man, see, you know what? That's why I said false prophet. Because I got brothers that still content. Like, they're still it. They're, and <laughs> you know what? We might get into this. Cause Uh-oh. Norris, I just t- I just, I talked to him yesterday. Right? Like I said, I I told Norris straight up, you must go to the Church of Fair Use. Like copyright is protecting you. Oh my <laughs> God, copyright is protection. That's a word right there, brother. That's a word right there. <laughs> All right, let me get to the intro. God, let's please. get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Aren't you guys welcome back? to another episode of the in and out of pocket podcast once again i had to change the name too many drummers got podcasts and in the pocket was always taken so <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that, that's how that's that powerful. happened yes but sir. uh now we got another legend another legend special guest in the building <sighs> he was blessed with three powerful parts of his name like just Uh-oh. it's ridiculous <laughs> he got the tony taylor and the junior like that's that's that's, that's a three-piece just that's ridiculous here i'm sitting here joshua crawford I, one of no the biggest religion. names on youtube for musicians doc <laughs> Appreciate it. Wow. Yes, sir. Doc. No, <clears throat> no relations to Jamal Crawford, even though I lied for years. But you know, <laughs> that's how I had to cover that up. But uh, man, but yeah, we got yeah the legendary Tony Taylor Jr. in the building. What up, uh, y'all? What, what what year again was? You know what? Let me just read it. I got it right here. Let's see. 
<coughs> Guitar Center's 27th annual drum off winner, Tony Taylor Jr. Appreciate you, man. It's absolutely, it's, bro. I'm honored to be on here, bro. Man, we are finally meeting face to face virtually, but I, <laughs> like, I <laughs> we've been we're gonna meet soon, bro. Because <clears throat> the fact that you the fact that you family to Norris, and I just found that out like last night, like oh, yeah, yeah. We, man, we're gonna meet. We're gonna meet. Yeah, I mean sh- hey, hey, I don't know. See, I saw I saw a story of you hooping like in, in your backyard and stuff, but I don't think I don't think you really like I don't think you live by that. I saw it was, it was, it was too much fun going on. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, nah. Nah, uh, I, no. Basketball is a hobby. Okay. Yeah. Like yes. meet meet me on video games. That's where you'll get a, the, the competitive. Which which which, which 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait. Oh boy. <laughs> no. Whoa. Whoa. I feel this I feel him. I feel the spirit. Hey, hey. I, the Lord just said Microsoft, and I'm starting to disconnect. Oh. I'm starting to disconnect. <laughs> never, never, <laughs> never. Never. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. PS5 all day, brother. PS5, PS5 okay. all day. There yes, we go sir. to church of PS5. There we go. Huh? huh? Church of Sony. Yeah. Glory. Glory. I just, I just heard. Come back. I just heard all the Microsoft unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard the click completely off. Like we still got love for y'all, but y'all absolutely. Ooh, y'all still in the Old Testament, <laughs> man. And they be cheating. They got they got a pointer. All they got to oh, do is point. <laughs> yeah, they, that's like, it. You ooh. die. <laughs> what what games though? So I am heavy on Overwatch, Fortnite. Um, those are pretty much like the the open games that everybody like playing. I'm a sh- mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a shooter. Like I like to play COD a little bit, but it's been a minute since I played. I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, but I'm about yeah. to get this new one. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I I, I tried Fortnite once. I got I like I don't know if my aim assist was off, but it it, it really <laughs> it, it ticked me completely off. I I uninstalled that game so quick. Look, I just started playing it within this year because um. I, that building crap is not yeah. it for me. It's That's, not it. Once I found out they had zero build, and I had a couple friends playing with me, that's when I started getting into it. Like, see, I didn't even know that they they, ha- they brought that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I might. It have is to, a might blessing. Get, it's a blessing now, brother. It's I might a have blessing to get back. Now. I might have to get back on it. Pause. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Check I'm, me. I might have to. <laughs> ah, my God! It's a oh. blessing now, brother. It's a blessing okay. now. What's your KD in Call of Duty? Ooh, I don't know. Yep. It's been it's that like long a, since I, I like, since I played. That's how you got long, as man. quiet as the church do on offer. Yeah, like yeah, literally, I'm, you, I'm you the supporter. I'm the supporter. Oh. I'm not the I'm not the killer. Like Wait, if somebody dies, I'm gonna help you. By making sure that so you're the a- assist, you're, yes. you're just the assist. Yes. Well, KD is a assist. zero point seven. I, that's that's just total yourself. Zero point seven. I, look, I learned. I learned in my life. Be honest. I'm not gonna sit here in front for nobody. And you got too many followers on social media, especially YouTube that watches all these video games. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not doing it. I, I don't, hold on. Now let me ad- let me address the subscribers. Uh-oh. I don't know how many of y'all watch video games because I had a gaming channel for two years and I'm still at 1,000 subscribers. So uh, make that make sense, subscribers. That and oh, I made one big mistake though because I'm, I'm I was real heavy on Mortal Kombat, especially mm-hmm. during Mortal Kombat 11. I live streamed on the channel. Okay. And one of my subscribers was like, yo, let me play. He embarrassed me in front of my own people. In front of my own people. I, like, I think I might have won one round. And what was worse is I kept hearing compliments from him. Oh, that was good. No, you did good. That was, that was good. That's when they get bad right there. <laughs> that, 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 was, that, was, that was rough. That oh, was rough. man. Yeah, nah. I had to step away from those games. Especially if you're trying to do live stream, you got to be good, good to be live streaming, brother. I can't. Yeah, I can't do yeah. it. I, I have faith, but 
Yeah, he, he called Peter. He didn't call me. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's what happened with that. Yes, sir. Uh, but yeah, Call of Duty. I'm definitely Black Ops Six. Is it? I think so. Yeah, I, I'm gonna play it until they increase that skill best matchmaking. <laughs> then I'm out again. <laughs> they they turn it off. Playing. I don't know why. Like I just stopped playing altogether. It's no, that no, that ain't what it is. It was the <laughs> space that it takes up on your PS. That's what it was. <laughs> you know that's that, you know what that's a whole nother podcast on how the most expensive console come with the least amount of space. What is that? And then the hard drives will take your leg. I just walk past them at Walmart every time. Every time I'm still just. I'm just going to delete the game I'm done playing with. <laughs> hey, I got one better for you, though. Okay. So, I went to Walmart, and I'm like, okay, it's for PS5. All right, cool, cool, cool. I don't know if many people know this, but shameless plug. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's a very shamed plug, but every hard drive does not work on a PS5. That's a message, though. That's not- huh? Huh? That's a message. That's a message. Huh? huh? <laughs> I don't know why. I bought two hard drives, two terabyte, four terabyte. I'm like, all right, I'm straight. Mm-hmm. That joint said unsupported. I said, God dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, and it says four PS5 on Walmart. Do not get played at Walmart. I'm gonna I'm gonna put y'all on. Get the internal hard drives. It has to be a Samsung and Get a heat sink because it allows it to cool. But PS5s has an internal hard drive that um, that you got to take off the cover. And there's a port that's covered that you got to unhook. You slip it in there. And that's probably oh, that's the best. best. I'm staying. Yeah, I, I got I you. I got try- you. I was trying to stay away, but you got me. You got, <laughs> I got me. You. you slip it in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, th- I I'm done. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna do. Ain't gonna do that too much no, more. but what's bad <laughs> is that I'm probably gonna call them all out throughout this entire video. <laughs> I'm going to. I've had, see, hey. see now. Now that we getting, now that we getting comfortable, <laughs> from here on out. I, I, okay, well, I'm a, we're going up. It's we're going be, up. Yeah, it's we're dang, going up. It's going. It's going in be the glory. Crazy. <laughs> a, a, conversa- a drummer's conversation is the most suspect it, it, it don't get worse than that it does not oh man in this pride month lord jesus yeah it's, it, not, it it's not gonna help it's not gonna help it's not gonna help Ooh, right hand be strong pause <laughs> <laughs> just like right there like it's like you you it's real over. comfortable on them drums pause <laughs> like that's why I'm holding you. I'm like, like, yeah. can they hold, what, like, would it support my weight? Pause. Like, it's t- it's too much. It's too much. Uh, stroke that thing, cause I'm like, hey, wait, whoa. <laughs> nobody Yo, I, can say nobody can say silent strokes anymore. Nobody can say it. Got a lot of power. What you been doing? I've been practicing on pillows. <laughs> I've been practicing on pillows. That is, Okay. Uh, all right. It's all right. Pause segment right. in the interview. It's gonna be a pause I'm segment. We'll pause segment. every time. Every time. <laughs> um. So uh. Yeah. Let's 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 start with the why. So I don't even why I pull this up. Like, cause the way it's, I edit this, the topic don't even show. Like, I end up cropping the whole thing out. But uh, that, why, <laughs> why 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 drums? That's what I was born with. Okay, so see, that's a that's a okay, okay. So what what age did you start playing drums? You said born, and I have a very like this triggers the life out of me when I hear this. But go ahead. I okay, just want so a, what what is the age? I'm gonna tell you what my parents told me. So when I was born, so my my father is a drummer, Tony Taylor Senior. Shout oh, yeah. out to my father, Tony K. Yep. Drum Taylor. Shout out! Shout out! Shout um, out! Aside from him, my whole family is musicians from mm-hmm. both sides. My mom used to play organ. Most people don't know that. And she was killing. Um, my uncle plays organ. Um, 
My uncle is a pastor now, but he used to play drums. My other uncle plays drums. And it just keeps going down the line. But um, basically, my parents told me that when um, – when I was when I was conceived, and my mom found out that I was um, that I was coming. Pause. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah. She used to pray for me because she knew that I was going to be a musician. Um, mm -hmm. She used to play music um, on her stomach all the time. She used to pray for me specifically that um, that I would be an anointed musician. And um, I would have the heart for God being a musician in this world. And then um, when I was born, they said I didn't cry. They thought that I was not alive. So they hit me. I looked at them and didn't even cry. Everybody laughed at me. My dad had sticks <laughs> with him okay. and okay. gave me some sticks right then and there. And as I grew, as I was growing up, my dad used to take me to his rehearsals. And he, he told me that I would not cry. I would not pee. I wouldn't do anything. I would literally sit up in my stroller or whatever they had me in as a kid and watch him for hours. And then I, I want to say probably at the age of two, I think they got me. No, I was just stealing my dad's kids. I would just get on whenever I wanted to, honestly. And as I was growing up, I would take anything and take it and make it a drum set. So I remember my grandmother telling me that I would literally take all her pots and pan, pans out and I would grab, you remember the, uh, I forgot what material that was, but you remember that um, the white sticks that was on hangers, the wire hangers, I would take those apart. They would be pissed at me because I would take them off probably like three times a day. And mm -hmm. they had plenty of them. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would take those, take those apart and just play for hours. And then like at one of my other grandmother's house, I would use her plants and make them into symbols. And I had like those little big toy truck cars and I would like use that as a drum set. And then um, if I was in my mom's car, cause this was around the time where they had the material on the middle of the cars that was like real pause bouncy. Um, no, you can't, you can't do pre pauses. This has got to happen. I have to, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I have to. <laughs> um, the material. I used to try to force my sister to sit on the left side because I wanted the pi I wanted the uh, pillow. Well, not the pillow, but the fabric of the seats on the right side to be my floor time. My mom mm -hmm. said I was, I was killing her forehead. Like I was knocking her out. Oh man. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, mean I have a history. <laughs> okay. But at least, at least you didn't like. Cause I, I got, I lost count how many times I got beat in church because, <laughs> like, this is back when you know they used to hang their coats up in the back, but it all all of them had them type of hangers. <laughs> like, like, yes, all of them, all of them. Because like that's when like because oh, back then man. back then I used to like I was so I was in like. It would blow my mind and pause. Godly. Okay, so it was it I was always amazed that when drummers would be playing so hard they'll break their sticks. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I ain't done nothing until I break this hanger. So I was breaking. <laughs> so yeah, I to, I I went through them like like ten yes. of service. Yes. But uh yeah, you, so. you was gigging, gigging. That's what you was doing. <laughs> Or, yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. So, but okay. But what age? Kind of hard to say. Kind of. I want to say. I want to say two is two. when like I was able to like hold drumsticks in my hand and start playing. But like it's always been infatuated in my brain. Like I've always loved it, and um. Yeah, like I was just exposed to it in so many different ways because that's when YouTube started to become popular. And then like I used to love watching concerts. My dad would just play concerts all the time. I was watching Michael Jackson heavy at the time. And at that time, I also used to be a dancer. So mm -hmm. I used to just want to do all the Michael ja Jackson dances like all day, every day. 
See, so I, I've I've been exposed to music for a very long time, and I've always just loved music. Aside from drums, like that was what I started with, but I've always loved music, and it's always transpired in different ways. Okay, do you still try to dance like Mike? Absolutely not. No. no. See, here's the thing, like, because I, I used to uh, dang near similar, because like I I was. I think it was I got addicted to uh pop locking when yes. like step up step up yes. two yes like, yes absolutely I absolutely. lost my desire to do all of that when it got popular to do the same dances. I'm like, wait, so now I don't get no credit to put all the work I put in to learn this complicated stuff. Like now we just <laughs> Oh my god. I was that's done. that's hilarious. I get I it. I want to say I stopped when I graduated high school. Cuz um high school was not fun for me. Like um I we got, got the into- same story almost. What what okay, could go into let's, let's go into that. Pause. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um I was living in Matson, Illinois. Pretty much my entire life. I want to say from like elementary all the way up until middle school. And I still live there. Um, mm-hmm. My father lived out there and my mother uh, wanted to move to Hinsdale. They've been talking about this for years. And um, in my head after a while, I was just like, uh, maybe it's not meant to be. I'm probably not going. So I was excited to go to the school that I was supposed to go to because it was all my friends. They had a very good marching band at the time. They were super popular. They was winning awards, all type of stuff. And um, I grew up with a lot of musicians that everybody knows. So Clemens, Jermaine, Arthur Sutton. Well, Arthur Sutton plays bass now. But if you don't know, Arthur Sutton is smacking on drums, if you ain't know that. Um, So I was growing up with them and Josiah, Leonard, all of them. So <clears throat> I went to school with Jermaine and Clemens. So, you know, in my head, I'm like, bro, high school going to be fun as Jack's. Mm-hmm. My mom was like, yeah, we finna move to Hensdale. And um, Hensdale was, I'm going to just say it how I need to say it. It was a white area. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't used to that because I was like in the I'm not going to call it the hood. I'm going to call it the bougie hood. Okay. So. The wood. So to, yeah. It was yeah, in the yeah. wood. <laughs> yeah. So to go from that to just a new way of life messed me up. Because, like, I just I just knew everything was done for for me. I'm just like, you moving me 45 minutes away from where, from what, everything that I know. And, um, yeah, it was tough, bro. It was definitely tough. Like. Granted, I am I am looking at it now, and I am absolutely grateful for being there. But it was one of the worst few years of my life. Like, and I knew it was mainly because I just didn't want to be there. And then on top of that, every day was like it was a repetition thing for four straight years. It's just like, can this get? Can we? Can we? Can we switch this up a little bit? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it was. It was a different situation for me, bro. It was different. Yep. And going through high school and then seeing now what these what's going on with this generation of high school, I have I am convinced that high school is high school is daycare for teenagers. It's it's just it's it's another way for your parents to not have to deal with you for That's a good amount. All you get a, is, you but... got a nine to five, you get your lunch, you you, you can do some extracurricular activities. You might get paid doing that a little bit, but uh, yeah, yeah, like, dog. I mean, you, you, you. I, oh my God, leave my ass, <laughs> bro! I'm I'm holding back so much, like it's just like man. It, high school for me didn't get interesting until my senior year, and that was only because that's when I really like felt uh, like had found that passion for drums. Yes, but like I. I remember not going. I just didn't, I just didn't go. Like I missed I missed 60 plus days a year. It it got to the point where like it got to the point where I would and like I didn't I just 
didn't go. I stayed home and yeah. like it, and and it definitely didn't help where Jason he had broke his leg and had homeschool. And when I found out that like he made honors after homeschool, when I found out that all he was doing with his teacher was playing NBA Live, the dunk contest, like he played so much of that he could do every dunk, every oh, toss, everything. God. I'm like, well, I'm no, nah, I'm doing Why this. Why am I here? <laughs> I, I'll say a quick yes, story. Sir. I'll say a quick story, then we'll we'll move on. But like, yes, sir. It got to a point where it got so bad. Where it was one time where my dad was like, you know what? All this skipping school and stuff. I'm I'm finna take you. So he takes me to the school. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, like I'm, I was going. I'm like, nah, I, this is not it. I, I don't feel like it. So I would walk back home. Now we were in like a three family house, and we was on the second floor. They made the biggest mistake by putting bars on the first family floor. So I would stack my textbooks up, climb up to my room that was on the second floor. That's how I would get back in. Pause. Jesus. <laughs> so I would do, I did that and I'm just chilling in my room. Did not know that my dad decided to call off work that day. So he come back Ooh. in and he's just chilling in the living room. Okay. I'm cool. I'm like, I'm just going to be quiet this whole yeah. time. Yeah. I missed so many days. My attendance counselor showed up at the house. That day, knocked, <laughs> literally, he knocked. <laughs> he knocked on the door. My dad brought him in. He like, we haven't seen your son in like forty days, and he's not. We don't see him at the school now. And then my dad's like, he. I don't even know what they were talking about because I, I already jumped out the window, and I, I, I snuck out, went back to the school. Oh my god! So and. By the time I got there, school was over. They was coming out. I walked in. I walked out. My dad was like, wait, where you coming from? I ain't lying. I just left school. What you mean? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's... that's The master arts of deception. Yeah, that, so that's <laughs> that. And that that type of stuff happened all, all the way until senior where I met a friend of mine. His name is... He got the best, the best, the best musician name I've ever heard. <laughs> Alexander Raspberry. That's clean. That's clean. Played bass, but he was playing drums at the time. And uh, me a musician and, that got a musician ring to it. Yeah, dude. Al Alexander Raspberry. That sounds like player. a name you. That's a, that, that's a name you look up on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, and that and but that that he, I saw his love for drums and stuff, and it like. It encouraged me and my brothers and stuff, and we we ended up doing like a jazz band from just just him, me, my brothers, and mm -hmm. we ended up we ended up replacing our drum line. <laughs> yeah, that, we replaced them, but like, that's a whole another story. But yeah, yes. So, sir, Doc. um, what is before we get into some? I don't even know why I'm pulling these up again. It's not going to show when I edit it. But uh, yeah, what's your most craziest gig? And by crazy, I mean it could be your best one or the most embarrassing, or both. Actually, we got time for both. I'll do both. I'll do All both. Right. Pause. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, let's go. Powerful. <laughs> um. Okay, let me think. So, I don't know. Like from a positive side, what was the most craziest gig I've done so far? Um, I want to say, okay, let me start with worst. The craziest worst gig. I got two of them. Okay. One of them was this past weekend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to fly through this. I'm going to try to fly through this. I'm not going to okay. make any names. I'm not going to, I'm not going to embarrass nobody. I'm just going to make this as inconspicuous as I can. Okay. So I did a festival all weekend, and I'm going to try to make this very, very short. Um, I knew people there. Um, a lot of friends from my church was working it, 
and then I have friends that um that help me with getting equipment for the church, and they do the back line for a lot of stuff in Tulsa. So did a festival. Um, they were having a bunch of sound issues. I get there, my sound check was at one thirty. I didn't have a sound check till six. That's how bad the sound was. They had a whole wow. situation where one of the boards had fried out and then their Dante network was acting weird. So they had to repatch everything to another board, but it was a different company. And they went from like 40 plus channels to 32 channels. So you doing a festival with 32 channels, everybody was mono. That's how bad it was. So, <laughs> <laughs> so had a whole situation where this guy was telling me not to tune the drums. And I'm like, this is a festival. I could touch these drums. Anybody else can edit however they need to. That's just, that's how I learned that's what you're supposed to be doing. And got into this whole situation. And if anybody knows me, I'm not confrontational. He almost got Chicago out of me. He almost did. (laughs) (laughs) And long story short, they couldn't get the click to run to my ears, but it was running to somebody else's. It was a whole situation. So then we fly fly later down the day. Um, it was two major artists that were there um, Friday and Saturday. The sound was so bad that they both were pissed. One of the artists had feedback the entire show. And I'm just sitting there like, yo, what in the world is going on? And I turn around, there's nobody in front of the house. I was having a panic attack watching all of this happen. So I'm like, I'm not going to intervene. That's not my job. But after a while, I can't, I couldn't help it. So I walked back there. I'm like, hey, is there anybody that can EQ her mic so that she can get this, get this feedback out? And he's like, yeah, he's at front of house on an iPad. No, sorry, not front of house. My bad. He's at Monitor World <laughs> mixing a festival. Now, mind you, this festival wasn't like a small festival. That joint was going down for miles. Mm-hmm. And it was packed both days. And I'm just sitting here like, why are we going through this? I see this man on the sub, on his iPad, just like this. I said, bro, what, the, what is going on? <laughs> Second day, they get, they get everything repatched. They was able to use their monitors. It wasn't no better. It was worse. And um, (laughs) the major artist, it was so bad that the major artist was pissed at them that I'm not going to say he or she. They left, came back, (laughs) and left again. That's how bad it was. Then it was time for her to go up. They didn't go up for another hour because they never saved the scene for her to get the stuff straight or their um, monitors. So they had to redo sound check and couldn't hear Jack. Then it got so bad to the point. First song, she cussing everybody out. God dang it, I said she. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's a clip. <laughs> cussing everybody out. <laughs> At this point, I couldn't take it. I was like, bro, I can't. I can't do another day of this. I went to front of house, I'm trying to help this man out. Her EQ was flat. I said, bro, what in the world is going on? I'm trying to help this man, right? I'm trying to help this man. I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to help him. Like, yo, turn this up, turn it down. Put this EQ right here. You can warm her vocal up. Then you can push it. And then look for that frequency to kind of pull that out. He keeps trying to explain to me, like, it's because she's standing outside of the speakers. I'm like, bro, I've been to too many festivals where people are right in front of the speakers. and ain't no issue. And you got a gate on it. So there is an issue right now. <laughs> so I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting here trying to figure stuff out, right? Tom's turned up. You can't hear him in the house. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I got one better for you. My man's had three snares. Couldn't hear the side snare when he went to the side snare, right? I'm like, hey, can you turn the side snare up? Nobody can hear it. He turns up the main. I'm like, side snare? This man said they were all on the same channel. I said, what the? I'm like, bro, how can you put three snares on one channel? 
And I'm like, okay. That'd be the worst. That'd be the worst. Ugh. Yeah, it, it was a bad situation, bro. I, I, I'm going to stop right there. But it was that was probably the worst festival I've ever been a part of in my life. Like, I rather would have done all the storefront churches that I've done rather than do that. That's how bad it was. Like, it was just unprofessional. And I felt bad because all my family from the church was there. They knew what they was doing. So it's like, oh, my God, why are we a part of this? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to look. I'm going to say one good because I, I feel like I've had quite a few situations where like they were really dope. Um, one of them was my first arena gig with Taylor Bennett. Um, Chance was supposed to do a tour, but he ended up not doing it, but he still had to date for Chicago. Actually, oh, let me rephrase that. That was actually a really dope day, though. Mm-hmm. My one of One of my craziest gigs was probably um, right before COVID happened, the NBA All Star Weekend when Kobe died. Just about to ask about it. Okay, I, I just thought about it. That was probably one of the best days of my life, simply because like Kobe was my hero. So mm-hmm. you know the fact that for one, this was my first time ever doing like any NBA All Star anything. Then Taylor was a headliner, and then on top of that, like yeah, I was booming with all my companies, like. I call random companies up and they 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 immediately answer like, oh, we'll give you anything that you want. And yeah, no, nah, like that was probably one of the craziest joints, like just being able to be a part of that. And, you know, and then on top of that, it was in Chicago. So not only am I repping my home city and it was in my home city, but I'm getting to be able to play and be a part of something that was historical. That was probably one of my craziest gigs because that was. That was different for me. That was different okay. for me. So what what was it like to be a part of something like that? Like your experience? Like like I I want you to like try to explain it to me as if you were vlogging it. Yeah. Okay. So like a day in the life of that. Yeah. So um how do I explain it? So I wanna say, if I'm not mistaken, we set up the day before. We set up the day before. Um it's basically kind of, it was basically kind of like a um, festival where like there's a bunch of drums sitting around everywhere. They had basically everything set up for the entire weekend for anybody that was playing. So I want to say it was like two or three kits set up. It was me, Rex. I can't remember the other person that played. Um, I know Chance played as well. Um, and the craziest thing was we were now most people don't know this, but we were the only group that played live. They wanted everybody. They wanted everybody to not play live because they they didn't want to go through all the channels and try to hook stuff up, blah, blah, blah. Taylor was not going for that. So we were the only group that played live. So um, I got there mad early, like little little thought for musicians. The best time to get somewhere is to get there early because you just don't know what you're about to do. It don't matter what it is, whether you got a drum set, whether you don't don't know what's going on. Like being early is one of the best things that you could ever do from a mental standpoint and honestly, just from a life standpoint, because it helps you a lot. But I got there early, set my drums up and I ended up forgetting something. So luckily I got there so early that I was able to get my stuff later. And mind you, I live like 45 minutes away. So um yeah uh it was real chill bro it was real chill like situations like that you would think that people would just be like real antsy and just Mm -hmm. real strict like that was probably like a very simple situation like they told me where i needed to go we had um we had people that was styling us so i got to get clothes and jerseys that i never had to wear because um taylor um taylor wanted a specific look And um, so I ended up getting like three different jerseys that from the same people that make the uh, basketball jerseys. So I have them sitting in my closet and I look at them all the time and I'm just like, yo, like I was really a part of something that was monumental. And they literally told us not to sell them like because they could go. They could go for real money. (laughs) How are they going to keep track of you doing that or not? See, that's the problem. They can't. That, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I kept them though. I, I'm one. Of, I'm one of the musicians that do not like selling their stuff. Uh, yeah, like, I, I saw your rants. I, yeah. I saw. Them. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I'm not using it and it's just collecting dust, please, I might as well get some money from it. But, yeah. um, yeah, I had a sound check. Was straight cool. Um, 
And we got to be able to be so. And the crazy thing is, we were able to be. Oh wait, okay, now it's all coming back to me. So they got us a hotel that was close to the joint. Mm-hmm. So um, we was able to go to every single day if we wanted to. Um, I went to. I went to the All Star game. I don't think I went to the dunk contest. Um, I should have, but nah. I was nah. young. Nah, I heard to. it was bad that year. Yeah, it was it was bad that year. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. So <laughs> I went I went to the game. Um uh box box floor, dope situation, food everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um it was like it was one of the like the most chill situations, like just making sure that you had your credentials, they didn't give you no problems. Like it was it was straightforward. Like I, I think I got to see like one or two basketball players. Um yeah, like it it's hard to explain. Like it was that chill. Like everything was just seamless. They made sure that you were supposed to be where you were supposed to be. Um, you had a whole itinerary of everything that you needed to know on every single day. Um, they even gave us um passes for one or two people to come. Um, so I wanted to invite someone, but um they couldn't make it. And then um yeah, it was just super last minute. But yeah, like it was it's basically like a festival type situation where you get there um nine times out of ten they'll send you to your green room first make sure you know where you're going then probably like maybe an hour later you can go um set up they bring your stuff up um sound check for about an hour and a half ish and then go back eat some food chill watch watch a tv of what's going on or you could go out um yeah that's that's basically it Hey, that's sound like it was a dope event. Um, it was. It was an amazing event. Did any of any of the NBA players see you play, or were they like somewhere warming up? I mean, like stretching or something. Nine times out of ten, somewhere stretching. I played for the college aspect, so if there was um, actual NBA stars there, I wouldn't know. Like they they could have been there, but. Um, I got to see a lot of celebrities that were there, so like just passing by, but um, yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay, cause like yeah, I'm on I'm on the lookout for all of these closet drummers that they getting on my nerves in the celebrity world. Like Steph, Steph play drums. Uh, Curry, K- KD, yeah, yeah, he he's uh, I, he. There's a post somewhere. I got it on my Instagram somewhere. I found it. He he's on he's on an electronic kit in the background. I don't know if he playing good, but I, he playing. <laughs> uh, KD was showing something in his house. Camera went by on his bed. He had drumsticks on his bed. I'm like, see y'all, y'all getting on my nerves. That's only, wild. Only person that came out so far was Donovan Mitchell. Yes, and, I saw that video. Yes, and he and, killed. Uh, what you mean, Donovan? Hey, get your shot is clean. Let, let's get them rudiments clean. Now, don't say you go. He killing. Hold on now. The only one I'm that's not, killing. I'm not the super judgmental one. I'm not saying no, 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 Tony. No, no. I'm not being judgmental either. Okay, because like for example, like the most recent one is gg jackson from um memphis grizzlies like he that's they the just, one i'm thinking yeah about. they he that that's I, I done set this on instagram like that's G, he the only one so far like he he's he he's, he's the one that's playing at his family's church still yeah, right? yeah that's that's who i was thinking about that's what i was thinking about sorry guys i'm not i'm i'm not i'm not on the nba side at all sorry all right, we 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 gonna move in on that. I'm just, 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 just gave all the credit to Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> like, Sorry, wait Donovan. a minute, you trash. He, he got a. I ain't say that either, but he like. <laughs> all jokes, all jokes, all jokes, all jokes. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all love. Oh too. man. Uh, okay, so let's get okay. We are gonna move on to the. Uh, mm, this is the this is the this is the kicker. This is the middle question. The one that. All right. You know, yeah. Um, when you gonna switch to minor? No. Nah. <laughs> uh, Never. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. So no, that's the, actually a real question though. Like people legit be asking me that, and I'm just like, 
nah. Like, it would be nice, but I am endorsed with Sabian. And mm-hmm. most people don't know that, but, and nor am I trying to, like, get Sabian to make it visible. But, like, at the end of the day, like, Sabian is not only, like, an endorsement for me, but that's home for me. Like, before I even got endorsed, like, that's what I wanted to play. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, even with DW, Remo, like, all them, like, if I was not endorsed with them, I still would be playing. And that's, because, that's- like... That's that's your dad's kit. That, that it was the DW, PDP. Oh, the green one. Yeah, that was my first kit at twelve years old. Oh, you were spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what that. Like, what though? Bro, that was that was my first kit. Um, they had some drum set set up, and they brought me in. I didn't know we, I was having a party. Actually, I think I did. But got there, and he was like. I got a gift and pointed at it. I was I was mesmerized. You I will never I, sell that kit. You know what I got for my 12-year-old birthday? Oh. My dad took me to WWF at the time. WWF. <laughs> yes. He sir. got he got some tickets from a friend of his. They had box seats, did all that and they and they got us to uh get ringside seats whenever we wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got ringside seats and I, I got I got pushed, almost chopped by Hulk Hogan. <laughs> he, he, he was he was he was in his Mister USA phase, pushed the life out of me. Oh my god! And you, so, and you somewhere in Chicago getting a full kit? <laughs> I'm getting assaulted by Hulk Hogan. That's just <laughs> wow. Oh, that is the worst situation for you because those joints be lit. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you got traumatized. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Yep. Oh my not god! Not me saying, oh yeah, like <laughs> God. Let's move on. All righty. <laughs> so yeah, here's the here's the question I'm gonna ask everybody. In your own words, what is pocket? <laughs> I don't want to hear. Don't please. Pocket is everything. Pocket is life. Pocket is breath. No, don't don't uh, word chest this. Do no, not uh, Norris this. Don't I'm do going it. To, I'm gonna <laughs> say it the way that um, I feel like most people will not say it. Pocket is one. Of, it, ah, Lord, give me the real words. Yeah, pocket almost, is what's going to get you paid. So, pocket to me. Okay. Is two things. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say it different. So, because I grew up on gospel and um, hip hop heavy, mm-hmm. pocket to me is you learning what you are supposed to learn and not what you want to play. So, For me, Chicago has always been heavy on play them parts. What is the drummer playing? Do not come in here and not know what they playing. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And same way with hip hop. Like, you better learn them patterns. Learn what that hi-hat is doing. Learn what that kick is doing. If they're doing some triggers, you might want to figure out where to get them. Or if they give them to you, better. But um, for me, pocket is knowing where you need to be at all times and if you want to step out knowing where to step out because i feel like people people think that like chops is everything and it's not everything but it's something Mm -hmm. and knowing knowing where to place that stuff and knowing your boundaries with wherever you work because some places they don't want you going crazy some places they actually do want you going crazy because like for me tulsa oklahoma transformation church my drummer's a pastor my pastor's a drummer (laughs) sorry guys i i i'm just waking up i literally just woke up right before this my drummer is a pastor Mike, Todd, Pastor My, Mike Todd. <laughs> Michael Alexander Been Todd. hired by Tony Taylor Jr. <laughs> <laughs> My pastor 
is a drummer first and a producer. So me coming in, he's looking for me to be a drummer. But he also made it very, 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 very clear that I have no boundaries. Mm -hmm. So these last couple years, like if you look from when I first started all the way up until then, when I first got there, I was chopping the shit out of everything. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I, I was, I was, I was chopping everything. Like just being 100 because like I went from being at Living Word, which most people know, but mm-hmm. that was a church where older, where the older saints were. So a lot of times my pastor did not want me doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Now mm-hmm. I had like, I had a little bit of leeway, but the freedom that I had from living word compared to TC was two completely different things. And knowing where your boundaries is, wherever you are, is what I think pocket is. Pocket is knowing that what you're going to do is where you're supposed to be doing it, going where you're supposed to be going, playing what you're supposed to be playing at the exact time that it's supposed to be played. That's what I think about as pocket is having the discipline to know that, okay, I need to play this here. I can open up here, but let me fall back right here. Um, Yeah. That's the way that, that's the way that I see pocket. Okay. So yeah, broke that down. Very good. Very good. Very well. <laughs> I'm um, glad. I'm glad you. <laughs> cause like, cause I always want to um, pre-pause, go deeper into this topic specifically Powerful. because it's um what <laughs> because like yes, I sir. know I know that uh one person can say pocket is give the artist what they're looking for. I agree. Good. Let's go deeper. Mm-hmm. And then you got other people that be like pocket is no chops. You just straight in most cases i agree but let's go deeper because if you're telling somebody that's just training up into drums that pocket don't require none of that they're never practicing on rudiments or anything like that so they run up on somebody that's looking for you to do that at some point yes you're froze absolutely Absolutely. you know Um, what i think i think the easiest way to say it and i and i don't know i'm not trying to get deep but I think Powerful. that the re- yeah. Go ahead. Powerful. I feel okay, that I get it. <laughs> Go ahead. I feel I feel that pocket is truly disciplined. Uh-huh. I think I think that pocket is the the mindset of having real discipline. I think that's the easiest way to say it for me is like having having the discipline to to know when to come up when to come down when to have dynamics when to not have dynamics when to play loud when to play low when to play actual pocket or when to go for it i i I feel that that's what pocket truly is is having real discipline to know when it's time to go and when it's time to pull back i think that's the easiest way to say that Okay, okay, we about, we about to get off this topic, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yeah. So once again, hundred percent agree. Um, it's also like, cause when I listen to different, uh, different genres of music and stuff like that, and I, I realize it's like, it's it's just I'm more so like low-key vexed on the the people that try to oversimplify pocket it's mm-hmm. like it's just something well yeah you should just do that that's it do this that's it they do that when i like just listening to different styles of music and also understanding like just playing drums in general and just learn trying to get better every day it's like realizing that I need to wait. I need to pay attention to the symbols I'm using, the sounds, 
the the times I'm using. That's a real like, thing. Literally understanding that my responsibility is heavy on how this music is going to be affected. Yes, on absolutely. And I do. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, it's like, how can I put it? There we go. Learning how to play pocket to me, to me, mm -hmm. is pretty much like reaching that. I don't even know what the highest degree of black belt is, mm -hmm. but like, for example, you got Michael J. J. White, who is still getting degrees in black belts at his age. So mm -hmm. like, it's like a, yeah, it, you just forever learning something new to add. Okay. There we go. Just hit me. You want your pockets full or you want it overflowing? Ooh, ooh, you ooh, you want you want ooh. your pocket to have a limit, or you want to be able to have ooh. everything you need for whatever moment? And you, all right, you just, all right, you just all right, all right. You preach, you preach. <laughs> but yeah, my, I past, mean, like... my past is on overflow right now. That was past. That was past. <laughs> Our word of the year is fruit. And you, we are in a series on overflow, so that's powerful, brother. You oh, brother, you, you tap, you, you tapped in. We're we're Pause. in the we're in the pot. Hello? <laughs> you talking to that thunderstorm that's coming? <laughs> <laughs> Hold the storm, Lord. Hold the storm. Hold it. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. So, hey, we, oh, we already an hour in. I'm on. Okay. So, we're going to. I'm not going to. I thought this was a podcast podcast, <laughs> brother, because that's what it unturned to, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so uh yeah let me let, let's move on to i guess uh yeah let me skip that what's your uh like what what is a practice routine look like to you i wish i had a real one to be honest with you um it just be or, random or let me add to that question how do mm -hmm. you come up with ideas to get more creative on the kit. Cause I'm damaged. I done, I done literally, I sent you that Mortal Kombat track years ago for like a day and a half. And the mess you came up with haunts me to this day. <laughs> it haunts me to this day. Uh, <laughs> you know what? As a matter of fact, hold on, hold on. I know I had ahead. this one. Yeah, I know I had this one. Go queued, ahead, queued brother. <laughs> like that don't this don't make no sense. Uh let's see here. Why did okay. Get off of what what in the all right. Let me put it right there. Pause. Yeah. Lord hammers. Okay. Yeah. All righty. So we're at the point. Guys, Shoot. if you haven't seen this video, shame on you. You got to be new. That's all. That's the only excuse that's you got. That's the, only. that's the only excuse you got. So, um, but yeah, it'll be linked in this description. Y'all make sure to check this out. Um, I even still practice to this track because it, it like, it forces me like to be more creative playing slower because for, I done got it. I know it, it sounds right to drummers like us, but, it, to the newer ear it's going to sound weird it is it, it has become a bit of a burden to now playing stuff fast is easier than sl playing stuff at a slower tempo that's actually been a real thing for a very long time and it's, it's that's actually been a very 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 tough thing for a lot of people even me to this day Cause like I don't get to practice often anymore. I got kids, a wife, a nine to five job now, and mm -hmm. I I hate it because I want to practice. And one of the craziest times that I get to practice is when I'm actually taking taking things slow. Pause. Oh no, no, it's when you slow down. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, so 
okay, when you take the thing Ooh. slow, you are yes. hitting the pond. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. It's it, it's 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 harder. Pause, my yeah. lord. Y'all know what we're talking about. Y'all know who we're talking about. <laughs> Being more creative Ooh. at a slower tempo is what's actually challenging, at least for me. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. And then just to hear you just do this. And then like, and I'm talking about slow tempo, but this one wasn't slow tempo. I'm just trying to figure out for years. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't like that volume. <laughs> I do not like that. When I try to do flams like that, when I tell you <laughs> it don't happen, it, it just doesn't come out. Pause. But it, it, you know what I mean? It is like, yeah. That, what? Man, to be honest with you, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to articulate <laughs> that type of stuff because, like, you sound like a when, drummer. You sounding like a guest drummer, but go go ahead. I I, I it's bro, because I hate it when people ask me that because like, <laughs> you had them on deck. <laughs> I had them ready. You sound like guest drummer. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, bro, like, and this is something that I've been saying for so many years. Like, music is a form of expression. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to articulate emotion sometimes because at the end of the day, it just comes out. So it's like for me, like whenever I'm playing, especially like back at that time where it was just straight drums for me, like er anything just came out and I, I didn't know where it came from. Like it become it be it be coming out. Time. Of the Take your second. time. <laughs> I want to pause so bad, but I'm trying to stay away from it at this point. <laughs> when when I'm in the place of playing, especially and this is something that most people don't understand about me. And I don't say it often, but I'm going to say it. I have different modes. When it's a shed, I play different. Mm -hmm. Like, most people don't know that. But, like, if I'm shedding, you're not going to hear those shed, those shed chops on a show. Unless it just makes sense to me, my brain switches. Like, if I'm playing for Transformation Church, I play a certain way. If I'm playing for a hip-hop artist, I play a certain way. If I'm out of shit, I play a certain way. I don't know why, but I have locked into my brain that they are not all the same. So, because I have, because I have uh, the mindset of music is always an expression, it's, it's really all about the... Um, how, do, how am I going to say this? The cap of creativity, if you have one. Mm. And, that's, and that's where it can get interesting because um, I was working out with Pastor Mike one day and he said this. It was so freaking powerful. Um, we were working out and he was basically saying that um, most people work out and always stop when, um, when it gets too hard. Pause. <laughs> But the mindset about all of that is that your mind tells you no. But at that moment, are you going like you have the power to move mountains, which means if your body is saying no, that you can't go further and you push past that boundary, you're pushing that cap off. And I feel like that's the same thing with music from the creativity aspect. If you think that you can come up with something different, you're going to come up with something different. And then on top of that, to make it even crazier, we live in the day and age where everything is televised. You got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got Facebook, and you have decades on decades on decades on decades worth of content that you could look from all the way up until now to 20 years ago. And at the end of the day, 
if you're going to take that inspiration and try to create something that makes it in the form of you, that's where the creativity aspect comes in. Because that's how I learned. I saw something that somebody did, tried to figure it out, and twisted it to where it fits me. That's how I've always learned. And even to this day, like, I, I don't say let's share it anymore. I'll say let's have a conversation or let's work out. Because I'm in the thought process of, I want to learn from you. And I'm praying that you want to learn from me. So if somebody's doing a chop, nine times out of 10, I'm probably going to do the same thing and try to twist it in some shape, form or fashion, because that's how I see shedding now. Like mm -hmm. I see it as we're having a conversation and I'm responding to what you said to me and vice versa. That's that's how I see. Um, that's how I see chops is it's a form of expression. That's why I always say like, it's hard for me to say or articulate what the heck I did in the moment because it's been so embedded in me that it's not just music for me. Like it's actually like life for me. And it's, it's just like breathing. Like it just happens. I don't know how to explain the fact that God gave us air and I can breathe it in every single day, but at the end of the day, it's there and I'm grateful for it. And that's how I see, that's how I see chops which is why I can't explain it all the time. Well, I yeah, can try yeah. to show you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we definitely set that up. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, cause I, yeah, I, I, I completely get what you're saying. Cause like what it just hit me, like we pretty, we, we watching Tony Taylor's sermon during the, uh, 2000, whatever this was mortal Kombat event, <laughs> like where you, you preached this part on. Yeah. So I, I, I understand. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, it, just, it you know it, it it don't stop me from going home mad at the message. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me go home, open my Bible, and like try to understand what I learned. Yeah, and what what you what you preached that night. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, like that's that. I just want to let you know, like this video. Yeah, this is this is. I I, I, I still play that, this right? mess. I'm like, how did he? And I'm just, I'm sitting here, Paul's sweating, just dying. Like, I'm mad at my brother. I'm like, this tempo's slow. Like, what is going on? And I'm like, <laughs> like, this junk here. Actually, but, you um, sped it up, too. Yeah, it was yeah. slower at first. What is... <laughs> I got all them different speeds, and I'm, I just get mad. By the time Shao Kahn saying round two, I'm done. I don't really <laughs> I'm like, let, let practice session over. Yes, sir, Doc. That was a fun time, man. That was a fun time. Right. We got a. Uh, yeah, Jason then got lazy though. Yeah, he he didn't, he, didn't, he got different avenue now. <laughs> like, yeah. like, he, was, he, oh. he, he full blown past it now. Yeah, full 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 blown full blown. <laughs> Almost. Let me not even. I'll let Bishop <laughs> Bishop. <laughs> Bishop Bosley gonna get Jason saved for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yes, sir. He for gonna sure. get. Him. He gonna get. Him. <laughs> yep. And we got ignore Norris Day coming too. Like we, we about to, <laughs> you know, like we just talked yesterday. Like uh, we working on the the, the Glad TV interview. Bosley, mm -hmm. he he wanna he wanna. And I just found out that Jason, uh, when he went to Atlanta, he had uh he got on the phone with not phone. He was on the plane and uh Dietrich Haddon was on there. Mm -hmm. He walked up, he said, I gotta get rebuked by Bishop. I'm like, okay, Bishop Bosley about that. So, yep, is Fred Hammond came up to him, he said, Bishop gonna save the church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bruh, that is so powerful. That is hilarious <laughs> to me, Brett. That is so good. You know, and you know, it's funny. I'm a, I'm a add it. I'm going to add this. This is what I'm okay. going to add for this, for this. So we're going to close out with this. Uh, I got, I got, I got two more questions. And then we, I'm a, I'm a we see. Hit. I'm a we see. We're going to do a Bosley try not to laugh challenge. That's what we're going to do. <sighs> I laugh at everything. It's well, you, get, get it out now. Pause. Wow. Whoa. That was a terrible one. <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah, let's move on. Ooh, ooh. Let's move on. All right, here we go. All righty. So, uh, I think I know a few, but if you got any, well, yeah, 
this to my subscribers. Uh, yeah, here we go. This is a segment for y'all. Um, who are some drummers that are in the community that's killing right now that you feel like are like underrated that need a shout out and people to put their eyes on? Yeah, that's not a pause moment. So we good on that. Dang, I gotta think about that. Um, it's been a minute since I thought about that. It's really been a minute. Okay. Robert Reedling. Okay. Rob is playing for a lot of huge artists now. But a lot of people don't know who he is. I, I, I'm going to say Robert Reveling. Um How do you spell his last name? R-E-A-V-E-L-I-N-G, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, Rob, Rob, has, Rob has been doing a lot with Trill um, as of recently. But a lot of the times, most of those shows is recorded at the crib. And they don't post enough to know how many people they actually really work with. Okay. And yeah, I want to say Robert Reveling, CJ Knowles. Oh yeah, um, CJ. Y'all shared like it was like it's just like what, what? <laughs> that must have been them shared that you talk about. Let me tell you something. Those days, I wish I still had those videos. Now that was a day that like my cap was thrown out the window. I don't know what we were doing. So I was living with him at the time. So all we did was shed. As soon as his mom left, <laughs> shed. And we were shedding for hours. And I mean hours. And it was just me and him. And um yeah, no, those days were probably one of the best days, like from the creativity aspect. And I and I I want to get back to that so bad, bro. I want to get back to that so bad. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Dang, I feel bad. If I'm not bringing your name up, just know that I love you. Okay, I I my brain is having farts right now. Um, yeah, don't don't get on don't get on Instagram or TikTok like like every comedian Cat Williams called out like <laughs> making your video. <laughs> We're gonna stick with them too for now. Okay, I, I think I think I'm gonna start doing segments of shouting people out on social media. I feel I feel like um, my platform is specifically for musicians, and one of the major things that I want to do is start pushing um people to know who's who because like we live in a day and age where making money on social media is a real thing and mm -hmm. um a lot of people just don't know how to go about it and i feel like musicians especially in this day and age it's very few people that's working and um i feel like i feel like yeah thank you i, I think i'm gonna start doing that shouting people out on social media i think i'm gonna start doing that thank you Josh. yeah oh no <laughs> No problem. The Lord just I gave it. The Lord just no gave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you get you you actually brought up a great point because like um that's other than what well, shout out to my sister Jasmine Crawford, other than her giving me the idea of reacting to drummers, <clears throat> it's something that I've always noticed and like realized like and would love to see more more drummers doing it's like um like you build a platform it can get a little to me to me it can get a little like oh okay they know who i am but mm -hmm. since i have this like it's so many well you might not know who this is and check this person out because like they, they putting in the work they grinding it's just they it didn't didn't blow up yet or anything like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we we got we got the power to actually do that, and yeah, that's yeah, it's a lot of um, it's a lot well, it's a lot of drummers that need to catch that revelation. Uh, you are one hundred percent right, bro. You are one hundred percent right. 
And that's why I said I'm going to start using my platform for that, because um, like you said, like musicians don't give real respect to musicians. And I'm not talking about OGs. I'm talking about like the underdogs, the younger ones. Like I've seen I've seen a couple musicians get bashed for being allowed to do something in a church or whatever the case may be. And um, yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to start doing that because like people are losing the creative aspect of music and i hate to say it but every song that we listen to nowadays all sound the same yeah i just hate yeah. to say it and yeah. i feel like that's a lack of creativity and but i also think that that comes with who you're around and the influence that you have and not more so the influence that like you just watch but like the people that push you to be better and we don't have that anymore. And I think, I think that uh, this podcast is going to push that as well as us individually. I'm not trying yeah. to preach, but oh, no, no, no. Musicians, <laughs> musicians need to hear this, bro. Because like, I, I, this has been on my heart for a very long time. Like I've even had a point in time where um, I randomly put on Instagram. I was like, Hey, who needs some money? Anybody need some rent paid? Somebody text me. I ain't know who he was. I wasn't even going to go to somebody that I knew. Hit me up. I went to my generals, my general uh, DM. Like, bro, my lights is out. I really need this. I sent that man $200. Blessed him. Not knowing what that could be doing for him outside of music. But, yeah, that support system, like, yeah, there's a – we're going to talk Okay. We're gonna talk. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna do yeah. an offline situation because I'm not gonna tell everything that I've been that God's been putting on my heart. I ain't gonna put it out just yet. But we're gonna talk. Most definitely. Um yeah, and, and some other it's see, look look at this. And we'll we'll talk about this off camera too. But like, where yeah. is that? I skipped this for a reason. Uh <laughs> yeah. Right there. What does that say? <laughs> it's like I, I was I, I had it ready <laughs> but like you know I actually I think we should talk about it I but I want to not I want to drop names that's why I'm not going I, I, we, can we ain't got to drop names Ugh. let's talk about it okay we, let's talk look, about it y'all look, know we're an hour know. and 18 in <laughs> we are hour and 18 in <laughs> let's just go ahead and talk about it because at the end of the day I I want to I want to shed light publicly to it I'm not going to bash anybody but I know that we need to actually have this conversation because this is something that everybody deals with on, on even a molecular to a, to a huge matter. Mm-hmm. So go ahead and ask it. I'm going to let you ask it so everybody know full context. Okay, yeah, I got it memorized. So what are you... No, y'all can see it. Y'all can see it. All right. What are you seeing in today's drum community that you do not like that's going on? All right, I'm gonna be blunt. I'm just gonna be blunt because nobody's gonna talk about this. Um, people do not want to help people. Mm. If they think that you're bad, they're gonna they're not gonna let you know that. They're gonna talk about you behind your back. They're going to find a way to. Um, push you out they're going to try to figure out what it looks like to be able to diminish you or make it the easiest way possible to um put you down and our generation deals with depression and anxiety and um abandonment heavy and it's not just from parents to kids like Mm -hmm. The musician community deals with that a lot. I'll I'll even I'll even say one for me. Somebody that I looked up to heavy had a whole situation and it made me look at him different. And it messed me up because as a child, looking up to someone that's an OG to talk down on me or even feel offended by something that I did hurt me because it's like, dang, like. I didn't know you were like that. And that's one of the major things that messes me up because I have always 
I'm going to just say it. I have always preached this to any musician. Be yourself and be authentic. If you're being fake, ain't nothing else to really explain. Like, be 100% authentic. And I think that a lot of the issues is that, one, some people are not um, in the mental headspace to get um, poured into to where they can take con- um, constructive criticism or any criticism. But at the same time, nobody is bothering to try either in love. I'll say it that way. Because a lot of people is always like, well, you're doing too much. You need to slow up. Or even just giving somebody an opportunity to mess up. Like for me, I was not given too many opportunities to mess up. I messed up one time at Living Word. Um, And this was during a conference playing for a guest artist. Um, They changed up the schedule. Nobody knew. I was listening to random music on my iPod at the time. And um, I accidentally played those intros to the songs because the person that was running the tracks wasn't there. So we had to do everything live. And I just had the biggest brain fart. Mm -hmm. I was so embarrassed that I cried. And I told myself I would never put myself in a predicament like that ever again. But at the same time, I had people that were there to encourage me through that. And I think that there are not a, there is not a lot of people that can actually talk to you and encourage you instead of just talking bad about every single little thing that you've made a mistake on. And I think that the musician community has that bad is that we talk so bad about each other and we're supposed to be one of the main ones that are connected. And um, yeah. I'll just say it like that because it can go in many different ways, but that that's probably one of like the worst things for me because I'm a people's person. Like when I graduated high school, I saw everything. Like I thought people were doing this. Nah, they were doing this. And that is what messed me up. Like as a whole is that like, I don't know who you really are. Mm -hmm. and that is something that has messed me up like even somebody came to me today he was like you're a celebrity and i'm like nah i'm a normal person i have a lot of followers okay but at the end of the day i'm just as normal as you are Mm -hmm. and i don't ever want to put myself in a place where like people feel like they can't speak to me from a normal perspective Because a lot of people think that, um, you know, because I have a following and they think that I'm this celebrity, that they can't talk to me a certain type of way. Because, like, when you when you see someone that is on that status, you change your perspective. You talk different. Like, you just try to impress them all day. It's just like, I don't need that, nor do I want that. I want to know about you. Like, how are you doing? Are you good? Like, what do you like to do? Like, you want to speak to me? I want to speak to you. It's that simple. Like... I don't ever want to be put in a place where like that status of um, celebrity makes you think that I'm going to say, Hey, what's up? You good. And walk away. That's not me. And I I'm praying that the musician community specifically changes that. Like it should start there because at the end of the day, the musicians are in the background, not at the forefront. So the fact that, we think that we have this status and can do that is a problem for me because at the end of the day, you're getting paid to sit in a corner, not sit in front of the spotlight. So honestly, it's really just false, false identity at that point. That's how I see it. So yeah, that's, I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna stop right there. Like that's, that's probably one of the main things that I have a problem with in the musician community is that nobody supports each other unless you're in their clique mm. and nobody and nobody is ever given a chance. Like I grew up and most people is never going to know this, but I'm going to say this. I didn't grow up playing all the gigs at all. I played three gigs at a time in Chicago my whole life. I wasn't getting called for every church gig. I wasn't getting called for, you know, tours back to back to back. 
I wasn't even getting called for that. And the one thing that I will say um, to go on the positive note, if somebody's not supporting you, there's always somebody that is supporting you. And that is the one thing that I um, that I had to like come to grips with is that everybody is not going to be fond of you, but there is somebody that is. And once you once you put yourself in that mindset, and then on top of that, like I also think that um, we all need to get back out more. And yeah, that just means like creating safe spaces for musicians to come together again. Like Nam just came back, and probably that's probably the only time that musicians really get to be together like i haven't seen many like gatherings where it's like hey yo we finna do a shed or it's a it's a um shoot having seminars for musicians like Mm -hmm. a lot of those be happening but they be overseas like the u.s don't do that often if i'm not mistaken you know it like yeah, the intentionality is not there anymore. Like, as a kid, I used to be going to concerts for musicians all the time, and I miss it. You know? So, yeah, that's my okay. that's my answer to that. So, let me let me piggyback. Oh, that's not even. You good. That? You good. You yeah, good. Let me, let me just. We're let, going me, uh, let me. T- <laughs> let me. <laughs> let me continue with that. That last part you mentioned. So like I, I never experienced Nam at its like craziness. I only went twice, and that was at both times was after COVID. So, um, yeah. So I, from what I saw there, I completely understand what you're talking about. On like, there's no like place where musicians just get together and get stuff done. Now, here's where I need to shout out Sweetwater because like they're they're on the right track. It's just like, um, and I, I'm talking with them because, like, I'm like, y'all, it, this could be crazy. You just got to get the right drummers involved. Like, that's yes. the only thing that's missing. Because, like, they just had they they drum month. It was like a miniature noun thing, mm-hmm. but yes, yes, there was no sound police. Everybody there came to hear drums everybody that was a fan of drums and music and all this stuff like there was no restrictions at all yeah no drama nothing <laughs> like they just came in those are the best just, days brother yes and i'm like and, and it, it was really crazy event for their first one but like yes uh just like sweet i i, I ain't prophesying but i'll say this <laughs> now if y'all don't get it together Look here, my ass. <laughs> if y'all don't get it together, oh man, Sweetwater is gonna take over like they doing the Guitar Center. Ooh. That's that's keep 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 kicking drummers out because you, like you you, pro- you prophesying, bro. Keep keep messing with the drum section because you you trying to sell some 70 year old a pair of in ears that they ain't never gonna use <laughs> like. You're trying to explain to 80 year old people what what drivers are. I mean, is this you know, Sweetwater? They they. That, I, I told them. I told you them, preaching, like, dog. But yeah, it's. I told them That's two good. years ago. Like I really gotta. I, I, I mean, we we it's it's gonna happen because like they they you know they took. We that real quick. This is the the first. What was this? It was a gear fest that I went to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I tell you, it's my first one ever. Mm-hmm. Um, they invited me, Zach Grooves. Uh, who was there that first time? It was me, Zach Grooves. Wow, Jason. Um, bro, no, was he there the first? That first one? No, he wasn't there that first one. R. David R. Casey Cooper, Orlando drummer. Mm-hmm. I think that was it, but it might have been mm-hmm. some other people. But mm-hmm. when I walked in there, one of the employers was like, "Oh, but I didn't know you was coming." Hey, hey! Immediately, he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna have a jam session set up at my house that Friday." I was only there for three days. When I tell you. I'm telling you, this was crazy. So, 
we get there. I'm like, how did he even in his living room? He had three kits set up, all full <laughs> kits set up. Uh, he had the food spread. I don't even know how he got all this stuff in that fast. Half of the staff at Sweetwater was there. All of them played drums and uh, and other instruments. So we had we had like we had like uh maybe it was probably like like seventeen drummers. It was like eight or nine guitar players, two keyboard players, including Jason. Mm-hmm. When I tell you that got so out of hand, we had the Zildjian rep who was there. Mm-hmm. Killing on a kit with minor symbols. <laughs> he didn't even care. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. This yes, is y'all, y'all, y'all can't do Yes, sir. Yes, um, sir. You know, the the he's one of their main people, Nick D. Virgilio. He does all the mm-hmm. gear reviews. He mm-hmm. came completely drunk, but he orchestrated the craziest shit. <laughs> I was like, yo. <laughs> Those be the best ones, bro. Those be the best ones. Where it's random, last minute. And everybody still comes, bro. It got to That's... the point where I heard Sweetwater employees in the kitchen like, see, man, we don't never get this. This this should be every night. I'm like, wow, whoa. And I'm like, do you have... and I told I told my reps, I'm like, could y'all imagine how this would be if we did this in the main studios with Tony Taylor, all of them. We will shut this place down. They wouldn't I got even one better for you. I got one better for you. If Sweetwater hosted a festival. Okay. Like an actual drum festival that like like all the mainstreams that, that be doing like 10 plus people giving every single person an hour, maybe two of a clinic. Oh, okay. Like, like the, okay. a seminar type situation. Because like... I. It's, it's so crazy. I was talking to CJ about this. Like, CJ was telling me, like, it would be crazy if DW did um, did a show. Me, CJ Thompson, Devin Taylor, Rico Nichols. Mm-hmm. Just trap alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's over with. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things that, like, we could be doing for our drum community. And then, on top of that, even giving stuff away. Even if it gets to the point where, like, we pay a percentage to pay our companies, be like, hey, let's give something away to give somebody some type of hope. Because that is one thing that, like, I haven't been seeing people do often anymore is let's give something away. And that is something that I have learned, like, being at Transformation Church is that the blessing is not you having it. it. The blessing is when you're able to give it away and still have more, which is why giving away always brings more because God can trust you with it. And um, yeah, I'm going, I'm going too far, right. but <laughs> Hey, okay. So here's what's crazy. I don't know if you saw this, probably not. It's like, uh, it was a, like a quick rant video. Dave Chappelle did, when he was telling people to boycott the Chappelle show being shown on HBO Max. I missed that. So like he, he did a whole background story on how uh, HBO turned down his idea for the Chappelle show. And mm-hmm. then years later, they were streaming his show on that platform and how Netflix was streaming it too. And he's, he said, I don't want people to watch it because like they, they, they slept on him and stuff. And he asked Netflix to take it down and Netflix took it down with no problem and stuff like that. I say Mm -hmm. all this to say this. Sweetwater is becoming like Netflix. This little segment we did on giving ideas on what they should do and like with the drum festival and stuff. Shout out to Sweetwater because I will uh, be sending this to them. This is the type of stuff that they're listening for. Mm -hmm. they They are every month they are trying to like improve every festival yeah and th- this type of stuff is definitely going to help make the next one even better so uh, that's, yeah that's amazing yep. I, i'm i'm here yep. for it yep i'm here for it yeah i told i told them like like we we you know you you uh, this was hilarious so the gear fest before that they invited um 
Pentecostal apostolic drummer um, Daniel Bernard. Okay. When I tell you, he did not expect. He came there. He knew I was coming. He came there ready to throw down. But when I tell <laughs> you, like, and no, I'm not knocking none of them, but the theme was too much rock. Daniel was coming. He he wanted he wanted praise break style sheds. He because like we were shedding and we kept on realizing. We keep getting forced back to the same rock beat. No matter what change uh-huh. we do. Uh-huh. That's when that's when we like we did an after hour sweetwater, threw on one of C dubs track loops, yeah. just went at oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, like and that and that's another thing. Like Sweetwater let us stay there after hours. And like uh hey, that's amazing. Just to film some more stuff. And they like it's yeah, that's we we're gonna amazing. get this right. We're gonna get yes, it right. Sir. We gonna yes, get it sir. right. We gonna There's get it plenty right. of money to be made on every aspect. Yep. Glory to God. What's up, you guys? I hope you're enjoying today's episode of the In and Out of Pocket podcast with Tony Taylor Jr. Today's video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Huge shout out to Sweetwater for sending me this podcast gear. If you guys are trying to start a podcast and you're looking for gear, Sweetwater is definitely the place to go. There'll be linked down in the description all the gear that you see me using. And uh, yeah, there are definitely affiliate links. So if you purchase anything using those links, it will help the channel out tremendously. Thank you guys for all your support. Make sure to continue watching these podcasts. Hit the like button and it will push these podcasts out to more people. All right. These guys have taken time out of their busy schedules to be interviewed. I really appreciate you guys showing your support. Please continue to stay tuned with all of these podcasts and let's help build this community even more all right let's get back into today's episode anyways right uh. right, right, right. right. <laughs> we, 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 we ain't gonna talk about a certain drum company that took my whole logo my slogan we ain't, we ain't gonna talk about it and they ain't used it Uh-oh. yet but he, i saw him write it down yeah that's why i'm oh, never mind i ain't gonna do it i ain't gonna do it we'll talk offline we'll talk yeah, offline. We'll talk- <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, but yeah, yeah, I I understand a hundred percent where you coming from with the like somebody you looked up to did that same thing, mm-hmm. same thing. It was multiple of them to the point where like I I, I made a whole video response because mm-hmm. I kept I keeps receipts because I'm gonna return some stuff. That <laughs> another one. <laughs> Let's go, boy. When I t- and I and it was it was definitely a great video to make, even if I was never gonna publish it, even though I was, but you know, I, I was advised mm-hmm. not to at the time. Yeah. But you like, did the I, right thing. Wait, did you post it? Nah, I ain't post it. Okay, I, good. I, I, I've showed you did it to the right a couple thing. people. You did the right thing. You did the but right yeah, thing. It's it's yeah. That's <laughs> but yeah, it's it, I, I, I'm in the same boat with that one. I get it, brother. Uh, yeah, it's a it. it's a lot of them out there that you know. It's it's just I been I grew up watching some a lot of them, and just to, like and I meet you. I didn't some of them I ain't even met yet, and I'm just like, oh, what's what I do to you? But uh, you know, yeah. It's a I understand round, what you're brother. saying. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. It's like LeBron James at the bubble. Now I'm I'm just going. I'm gonna have to. Uh, <sighs> Take the uh take the the, the the big route again. He wanted to snap. But uh yeah, you 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 made a sound when I said LeBron. What, what's <laughs> what's up with that? Not oh yeah, that's, that's a discernment. I he ain't the goat. I, I that's a discernment there. Like I'm just you know, I he he's not. We we can't get into that. But we're, I, not, I we're, not, we're not. I will we're glad. not. I will Look, glad. That's not my realm. That's not I'm my realm. Saying, I w- I can talk about drums all day, but we. You know what? We we just, just gonna we just gonna go with stats and yeah. say that Michael Jordan's the best. Yeah, I, I mean, like, you. Ain't... It's that simple. I I heard LeBron is definitely one of the best. Yeah, but that don't count to them. them. That don't count to them. That don't count. It's it not. Don't, a, it's not a... It don't. <laughs> <laughs> only only jesus is a jealous guy like he 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 the top like he not gonna there ain't no other goats 
But I mean, I saw. I, never mind. I just come on back. I heard them unsubscribe. I, it's, they, they they leave quick. <laughs> like, come on back. Oh my goodness. Bring it. <laughs> we we back. We back. We yeah, back. We back. <laughs> um okay, so yeah, let me uh let me go into this and then we'll the the reaction stuff. But uh let's do it. Let let's let's get a testimony out of you. All right, let's do it. What what, what you what you need from me, bro? A testimony. <laughs> what, what type of testimony? <laughs> I, I need I need real context. <laughs> uh okay, um I mean, it could be accomplishment. It could be a lifestyle testimony. Any. any. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. It's kind of going back to what we talked about, but um, I'm going to just start with this. Um, you are more than enough for something. Um, I feel like a lot of musicians do not get that That implanted in their head to where like you're gonna get called for something and um yeah we don't we don't get encouraged in that aspect so i say all of that to bring it to my testimony so as i was saying uh earlier like growing up in chicago like people said my name but they did not call me like i had plenty of people Hey, you killing you this, you this, you that. You the guitar center drum off winner. Never got a call. Oh, so this is after. Before and after. Okay. Okay. Um, and for the longest, I thought there was something wrong with me. And then I realized that um Yeah, I'm gonna just say it blunt. I realized that there was somebody that had real value in me that was going to pay me real money. And I feel that God protected me from certain things because the, um, the gift that he gave me with the anointing that he gave me is genuine and it's not coming from an arrogant place or a place of, I can't even think of the word right now. Um, entitlement. There we go. Um, I've always wanted to be a great drummer, but I've always wanted to be a genuine musician as well. I wanted to be, I wanted to be known for Tony is a good person off the drums, just as much as he is on. And, um, for the longest growing up, like I wasn't getting called like that. Like, and there were church gigs everywhere, everywhere. I was getting called maybe once or twice. Like, I was not getting called like that. But what I realized over time was that everybody may not see that value, but somebody does. And I say all of that to say that I started getting called for gigs outside of Chicago. And that's where my real money was actually coming from. Like, all the gigs that I was getting in Chicago, $100, $200 gigs. But then I'll go somewhere for a week and get $1,400. And I'm being very blunt because at the end of the day, like a lot of people, a lot of people feel like either they just can't get the big gigs or there's just no money to be made being a musician. And I feel like it is, but it all starts with your mindset. And once I got to the mindset of somebody sees the value in me, the right gigs were coming. Like to this day, like working at a full time church was hard on me. Because it meant that sometimes I just couldn't do certain things. Um, and I, I'll just say this, and I'm not saying this because, like, yeah, I'm going to just be blunt. Because, like, um, most people don't know a lot of this about me. And I feel like a lot of people just hide instead of just being open. So I'm going to be open. Mm -hmm. If you know, shout out to my brother, Okwa. Uh, he is... Um, he is a tech. He got known for working with Brian Fraser Moore on the Man of the Woods tour with Justin Timberlake. That's when he started working very heavy. Okay. He ended up coming to my church. Um, he ended up coming to my church. Uh, we were doing a um, 
a sound testing for what sound system we were about to buy, speakers specifically. And um, they brought in text to get our stuff together. And he was there. Pulled me to the side and was like, hey, um, I'll just be open. Mike Reed is about to go out, out of town. Janet Jackson needs a drummer. And I think you could do it. I said, excuse me. <laughs> I was so elated in the moment because I'm like, bro, like somebody had like somebody thinks that I could do it. Even if it didn't go through, the fact that he even considered me, he's like, bro, I just set up, I just set up your drum. You know, triggers, this, this, and that. Mike Reed about to go out of town with Alicia for a little while. Janet needs a drummer. You want to do it? Because they looking for one. And I was like, I can't do it. My wife was pregnant with my son at the time. Full-time job. I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I just did not know what to do. But I said no. I should have talked to my wife about it first. But <laughs> I told her afterwards because I knew in my head, I'm just like, she's not going to go for that. They, they finna have me out for a couple weeks. I got a full-time job. Like, I can't just do that. And I told her, she was like, well, why didn't you do it? I said, mother, I was pissed. I was pissed. And, but I say all of that to say that um, I, like, when I moved here, I wasn't getting calls like that anymore. And I just thought, like, Maybe people just didn't think that I was available or whatever the case may be. I just didn't know. But that reminder of knowing that somebody thinks that I can do it was enough for me to know that, for one, God sees me. One. Two, always, always remember you don't know who's talking about you, whether it is negative or positive. And I say all of that from my testimony is that once I came to the grips of I don't have to be on every gig and I was okay with playing for the storefront church or if it was the arena, I didn't care. I just loved music. And because I had a positive mindset as well as a positive attitude wherever I went, it kept me where I needed to go. So even in this place of where I'm at right now, where it's like, and I'm just being 100, like being at a full-time job, like I like to travel. And TC is now getting to a place where we're releasing music and stuff is about to start kind of pushing higher, higher, higher over time. Like I was here for three years. I didn't, I wasn't really doing much and I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing. But at the same time, like I just did not know. And I've come to the realization that no matter where you're at and no matter what position you're in, what season you're in, if you stay in the mindset of always being positive about who you are as a person, the right people are going to come around you. Because it, it all, like I, I said it earlier, like it starts at the mind. Like your cap is what you decide to put it on. Like your mind could be saying you can go this high, but. God gave you the power to go higher if you want to, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I say all that to say that my testimony for me is that once I realized that my mindset had to change and I stuck with it, even if it felt tough, that's when I started seeing results. So I encourage everybody um, that's watching that the greatest thing that you could ever do is encourage yourself because everything starts with you. So, um, yeah, that's my testimony. My testimony is that I am a man that can say that I don't have everything that I want, but I'm grateful for where I am because of where, where I set my mindset to. Yeah. yeah. I ain't got an applause <laughs> button. Uh that that soundboard is upstairs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About to get triggers on this joint, Doc. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I got one more deep question because it Let's just do it. Me. it just Let's do me. it. Um, I I brought this up before, and I I have another take at it that I want you guys watching to try to see this viewpoint that I'm I'll bring up. Mm. But um, I brought this up 
on the very first episode of this podcast. It, um, and ooh, this is such a touchy topic. They, 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 they ready to crucify, and it's like, hopefully, I'm bored, after, bro. yeah, with getting paid to play at church. <laughs> it's a simple <laughs> sentence, but it just, it just, it's very touchy. It's very touchy, it, and I just. I just heard certain people pick up their stones. They they about to just start tossing it. So before you throw it, just listen to this this aspect. I, I, I'm I open up with this. Let's do just, it. Just just listen. Take take this journey. That pay, mm-hmm. I'm painting a picture for you. Mm-hmm. So we have a church like Transformation Church that has the means to bring on. Ty Tribbett, and he comes over there and sings all the songs that you guys are familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. There are some churches that can't really afford that, so Mm -hmm. they have the choir learn it. So that Mm -hmm. drummer and those musicians are learning these complicated albums for your church to come and enjoy it for free. But you paid Ty Tribbett. And all of them. Matter of fact, let's go even deeper. You've bought their albums. You've supported <laughs> them. Yeah. You've paid the money to go yeah. hear them and to go see them. But when we are in our lab slaving, learning these songs verbatim, you get it for free. And then this is taking time out. I'm not, let's add this. Let's say I have a family and I'm doing this full time. Now I'm taking time on my day learning these songs. I got to go to rehearsal. I got to make sure that, as a matter of fact, I got to invest. I got to go get certain gear and stuff because there's mm-hmm. triggers on that song. So I got yeah. to get this stuff right. Yeah. And it's coming out of my pocket. But then, uh, but. Mind you, like this, and it's, let's add some more. I might have went to school for this. I got Keep a going. degree. Keep going. If I go to school to become a doctor, I'm, 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 I'm definitely not getting told, you know, that health insurance that you know you inject this needle to me, like this. You doing this for God? You ain't doing this for the government. They, they you don't need that. That's not your money. <laughs> oh man! Like that's. I'm Let's watching, talk about like, it, bro. We don't. We we done been blunt this entire podcast. Let's go. You Let's paying go. the cooks after service? You're buying their plates of food. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Let's talk about it, bro. Let's talk about it. Last time I checked, and I, like I'm not like this is these are the, the churches I've experienced. I'm talking, but this my is life. this is a real concern for a lot of people, though. So let's talk about it, bro. Let's talk. Jesus about it. beat them out the temple for doing what? Were they not selling in the temple? You're you're walking out with your plate of food you paid for. <laughs> oh God! But you know that is so powerful. That, that's just that's just a. And, and and I I say all this to say this because like uh, see I, I I'm not gonna say no names but like just like you you got history with certain things like I've I've gotten fired from three churches in one Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, one of them was because I asked for an extra twenty five dollars because the one fifty that I was getting paid went straight to gas because of how far the church was. And I'm asking for an extra $25. And that day. We, they you know, fired we you came. for that? Yeah. Just for you asking if you can get an extra $25 because you had to drive? Yep. I was on the phone. They, very confused. So you're asking for extra compensation for, but you're not doing any extra work? I'm like, the money you're giving me is going straight to gas. I have hmm. bills. 
I don't, I, I live in a house. <laughs> like, are you, uh, like, but you know, that's, you know, that's, yeah, let's talk about it. I just, All right, let's talk I, about they, it. They left again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll start with this. It's all about heart posture, for one. Two, um, I I believe that there is a um, what's the word that I'm thinking of? God, give it to me. There's a certain um, time and place for certain things. So for me, um, I will forever feel that what you feel you're worth is validated. And you need to make sure you back it up, but that's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I do feel that um, if you're asking for a certain amount of dollars, it's because you feel that you're worth that. So I'll be 100 for me, I don't mind taking low pay gigs sometimes, but not all the time. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're not only paying for you to play, you're paying for my time. Mm-hmm. And the time that musicians take to ensure, like you said earlier, the time that musicians actually take, people really don't understand how much or how expensive a musician should be. And the reason why I say that is because the world does it. And if we're supposed to be as churches, if we're supposed to be the safe haven for what this world is supposed to be, and you can't even pay your musician for making all the stems that you had to make last night, for doing three rehearsals, for doing three services, all for $125, the way that I see it is... You expect me to sacrifice, right? What are you sacrificing? I feel that it should always it should always go hand in hand. A lot of churches don't believe this. And that's okay because at the end of the day, musician, the musician world, the mentality of it, even in the secular world, has dropped. Like people don't take the value of what a musician really is to its top peak anymore. I remember um, it was this viral video of this drummer. I can't remember who it was. Um, He was in LA in a clinic and he was talking about how musicians do not get paid what they used to get paid anymore. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was playing for Michael Jackson getting 70K. Then Lionel Richie was like 60K. And then like it just kept going lower and lower. But this was just to be with them for less than a year. Not even for a full year. This is not like your salary. This is just one person for a couple gigs for, what, six to eight months? But now people can get that if they're doing a two-year tour. I ain't going to say that's what they're getting for real, for real. But Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I really do believe that it's all about heart posture and it's all about um like for one it really is communication but a lot of people just really don't understand how much time that it takes for a musician to do what they're really doing and i have had to accept that on so many situations where it's like people have told me like i can't pay you what you want but i can't give you this the respect for that for me will make me say yes because for one, the communication was was put to me up front. So mm-hmm. at that point, it's up to me to say yes or no, whether or not I'm gonna do it. And yep. the part the part that frustrates me that I feel like a lot of people have messed it up in the musician world for a lot of others is their commitment. If you say you're gonna do this gig for $150 or $25 or free. Don't don't do a no call no show. Because your word is bond. And I feel that churches specifically have gotten um traumatized in that aspect. Like, hey, I can only pay you 150. And these are genuine people. 
where it's just like, hey, I can only pay you 150. Can you do this? Yes. At that point, it's not their fault. It's yours. Because at the end of the day, no matter. Yeah. I get, yep. If the communication is there, there should never be an issue with complaining because at the end of the day, you gave your word. Your word is bond, especially for musicians. If you say yes before getting paid, like at that point, it's like, we're good. We're locked in. There's nothing else to be said. So I feel that it kind of goes hand in hand because like there are certain situations where people be like, hey, what are you charging for to record a song? I'll tell them my rate. Some people just don't respond. Some people will be like, okay, I can't pay that. Can we do this? And sometimes I may say yes. Sometimes I may say no. Because at the end of the day, like I know what my worth is and I'm always going to start there. But at the same time, my heart is not for the money. My heart is for the fact that I have a wife that is diagnosed with sickle cell that you're taking time away from on top of my two kids that are babies. And I live in a state with no help. No family, no nothing. Like, mm-hmm. brand new life just started. Lived in Chicago all my life. So there are certain aspects of me because of my situation that I'm going to charge you for. And then there are just some people that it's just like, I'm about, to, I'm about to break you off because I need you to do this whenever I need you to do it. And a lot of people do not have that mindset. It sucks, but like... I'll get I'll I'll be blunt and give one situation. I've never had this happen to me in a secular gig until then. The only time that I've ever had it happen to me was when COVID happened and I was going month to month with TC. They called me. Well, actually, no, that wasn't a that wasn't that situation either, but it was still good money. But this was the first time this ever happened to me. And this changed my whole mindset about how I get paid. You can let the let the people know who TC is. Transformation Church. Okay, there you go. I literally thought you was talking about you know <laughs> this is an artist TC. I just got no, 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 no. I'm, I'm gonna say the, <laughs> I'm gonna say who the artist is because he's good people. Um, okay. Shout out to my homie Rico Nichols. Um, yeah, shout out to Rico. He, yeah. He's I'm, he's wanted to push me. Actually, no, I'll give y'all one better. Him. Rob Gruinger, they've been trying to get me on gigs in LA for God knows how long. I didn't know it, but like some of my homies were telling me like they really want want to have you work out here. But this was like right when I got the job with the church. Mm-hmm. So um I was I got called by Rico um to fill in for 24k golden. They came to me and told me I got a day rate of 600 dollars I said, excuse me, <laughs> including the flight. Mm. So that's a day rate by itself. I said, it, I, 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 I'll take the gig. I, <laughs> I learned 18 songs and didn't get all of them until the week before. I got, a, mm. I got half of them and I had to learn that stuff, but I had the respect of them specifically because they did their part. I sacrificed, and even if it was last minute, they did their part. They, they communicated to me, like, hey, send this to this person so that you can be paid. It won't be immediately, but it will get paid this, and we need you to learn this many songs. And I learned them songs. I made sure to learn them songs because at the end of the day, like, the the sacrifice was met together so i i i walked away with a crap ton of money on top of them paying for my um any anything that i had to spend money to work with them my whole mindset was messed up i'm like yo now mind you 24k golden is a big artist but imagine a bigger artist what are they getting Mm mm-hmm You know what I'm saying? It's like the mindset is different. And the crazy thing is they got cheaper. So I don't even want to imagine what they were really paying people back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it changed my mindset where it's like, if you want me to sacrifice and you want me like at that point, you can yell at me. You can go off on me (laughs) for saying, why didn't you learn this music? 
You have every <laughs> right. Yep. Because yep. at the end of the day, the sacrifice was met. And the expectation was not only um, given to me, but y'all made sure that I was insured. And that is a lot of the problems that I feel like a lot of people, not churches specifically, but like that, that's where it kind of like gets weird, where it's like at the end of the day, even if they're not sacrificing, if they give you the respect of giving it to you up front and you say yes, stick with that. Because the, the crazy thing is, and this is what I learned, is that if you're not, if you think that you're going to be faithful in a big gig and not faithful to a little one, your your heart and mindset is already messed up. You're going to F up the big gig. That's mm-hmm. just how I see it. In some shape, form, or fashion, if you do not have the same respect for something little as big, you're going to mess something up. Better yet, it may not even mess up your gig. You might have messed up an opportunity from a spiritual side because of the mindset that you have. And that's where it kind of goes hand in hand for me, where it's like what I said earlier, it's all about the heart posture. If you say yes, go. If it's for free, like I'll give, I'll give y'all one. Um, I was doing these two gigs for, um, for my wife mm-hmm. and for a friend of mine, um, well, I'm forgetting names right now. But one of them wasn't paying. And one of them was paying like 150 maybe 200 TC called me for the first time. Mm-hmm. They called me the night before. I was like, hey, we need you to fly out. No, it was the week of, but it was still last minute. They called me and was like, hey, we need you to fly out to Tulsa and do this conference with us. I wanted to do it so bad, but my integrity of saying yes to somebody ensured that I got this job because I told them, I was like, hey, I would love to do it, but I already said yes to something. So if y'all tell me in advance the next time that y'all need me, I'm there. And that's exactly what they did. They respected it. And at the end of the day, everything worked out. I had a great time. I got paid well. They even asked me how much I wanted. I was just like, oh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I figured it was a big church. I was going to pay me a decent amount of money, and they did. So I, at that point, I'm just like, cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's like at the end of the day, like your heart posture with anything, like I could have took that. I could have took that opportunity to play in an arena instead of play for these services and tell them last minute y'all go out to find somebody else but it's all about the hard posture and that's something that i feel like a lot of people have an issue with is that they will cut something good off that is consistent for something that's big pause um i mean it was a long enough wait (laughs) you got that one <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my that's my mindset when it comes to um when it comes to just money, specifically about churches, but I, I really kind of just brought everything as a whole because I feel like a lot of people just don't know nothing about this stuff. And I don't know everything, but I do know a little. And I know that it's a couple things that you need to consider. Make sure that your heart is right for anything that you do. Always Make sure that if you say if you said yes, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. If you said yes and just disappear and, and be a no call, no show, you're not going to get trusted. And that in, in the musician community, I have to say that type of stuff comes around very quickly and it travels far and fast. So if you want the big gig. Make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to get to that place. Make sure that if you say yes to a storefront church, go faithfully. You know what I'm saying? And be on time. Don't matter whether it's a small gig or a big one. Like, Make sure that your heart posture is, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to make sure I know this music. I'm going to put my best foot forward. Like I, I did a show for a friend of mine um, for a festival not the festival that we just did, but mm-hmm. some weeks before that. And I did it simply because I saw that she could actually like be great. 
Like she had dancers and everything. We ain't had no tracks the first gig that we did. I was like, yeah, we're never doing that again. I'm going to make the tracks for you and I'm going to give it to you for, and I'm going to do it for free. She ended up paying me more than what, what she was supposed to pay me. And that's simply because my heart posture, like there, you never know what could be happening. I'll give another situation. Um, when I was playing for Taylor Bennett, um, he pulled me to the side one day and was like, Hey bro. And I wasn't making a lot of money with him. I was making $200 per show. He was like, bro, I just want to say I appreciate you. I see that you are always the first person to rehearsals. Even when we're not doing anything, you're making sure that you're on your toes. You you make sure that you got everything right. You make sure I'm good, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to raise your pay to $100 more. Let me tell you something. That changed my whole life. Bro. Even though it was $300 every show, we were out three weeks out of the month, every month for a year and a half. Aside from still being able to go to church. Sometimes I miss church, but most of the time I was able to still make services. So I was making good money. I was fine with the $300. But at the end of the day, it's because of my heart posture that that changed. Then when COVID happened, they started going up to the thousands. Every show we did, twelve hundred, two grand. You know what I'm saying? And it's like because of my heart posture and because of how consistent I was when I was saying yes and when I was saying no, whether it was a big gig or a little gig, at the end of the day, if you stay consistent, not only will your life around you change, but like, bro, yeah. Yeah, that was Tony Taylor, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, it's um uh yeah, I just, I just, it's the, I, I just don't understand why this is such a to, a touchy subject when it's, it's, it's very, it's common sense. Like, especially now where like his, I should not be getting, if I'm getting paid anything, I should not be getting the same amount that I got when I was 12 playing for you guys now having bills and a family i i am 100 like, percent with that and it's and then it's then it's the well you shouldn't be doing this for money i'm like well nobody said that's a job y'all keep doing I will, I, I will absolutely say that that is i'm just gonna say it that is a manipulative term mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it's, at the end of the day the money that you're making to fund your church. You going to say that about them? When somebody calls you to, let's just be 100. Every pastor gets paid when they go somewhere. Yeah. Especially big names. Yeah. And, they ain't, and they ain't cheap at all. I hate to say it, but the value is not there for musicians no more. I said it earlier, but the value for musicians is not there. Somebody could go preach for 45 minutes and get a thousand dollars and nobody will ever have an issue with it. Ain't never been to school, ain't got a doctorate nowhere. Just saw that you could make money doing this. Picked up the mic, turned on the Bible. We're not app. even finna go there. We not hey, even hey, finna go there. Hey, I've seen I've seen I've seen a pastor literally has kids. They 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 he ain't got a job. But they got they got all the new iPhones. Who paying that bill? You don't have a job. <laughs> like what? Let me tell you that same bro. person. That same person. Let I'm not even going. I'm about that's to turn to Cat Williams. That's I'm about to go like yo, <laughs> yo. Bro, that it just it just goes back to what I was saying earlier, bro. The value of musicians is not there anymore, and I'm praying that it gets back to that point, but. It also needs to be, um, it also needs to be some work done on musicians' part as well. Yeah, because, yeah. like I said earlier, like churches have tr been traumatized to where they have paid somebody big money and they were getting mm -hmm. no results. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it's even a thing of like people will kind of undermine what you're doing and want more, and it's like I need to be, be yep. I need to be being paid more to do that. And it's yep. like, well, your heart ain't right. It's like, nah, like the same bills that you need to get paid is the same bills I need to get paid. And everybody's situation is different, which is why I say it comes back to your heart posture. If you're asking for $5,000, 
and it's not even that type of gig, that's your heart posture. Yeah, that's, if yep. you got kids, like my situation, wife, two kids, no help from family. Got a couple friends that we entrust with our kids. But at the end of the day, we are on our own. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect me to say I'm going to take this $200 gig to do a two hour, two hour uh, concert while you about to be getting paid 1500 make At the end sense. of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about the heart posture and the value. And the people that actually value you is going to pay you the real money, which is why a lot of musicians run to the secular gigs, because at the end of the day, they actually value what you're doing because they know how much it takes. Even if it isn't all the way up there, if they're giving you $500 to do a four, 45 minute gig, I feel like that's value. I'm about to say something that's going to shake up the internet. I Let's said I it. wasn't going to go Cat Williams, but Let's do it. A, we check can, this brother. out. This je this hit me uh, last week. I was talking to my brothers about this topic, and you just said something that that perfect time to segue into it. Let's do it. You said that's why a lot of musicians go to the secular route. Mm -hmm. Listen to me carefully, people. If the church was paying the musicians their worth. Most of the secular songs y'all preaching about wouldn't exist because they got all of that from the talented church musicians that had to leave because they could not afford to make a living with what you're giving them. I might, I, I might, I might add Cat Williams taking that truth. sip. I, I might have I hate, to do that. I hate to say it, but that is the absolute truth. And a lot of people get angry about that. And it's yep. like, what are you angry about? Like, you're not about to pay them what they're paying them. And then on top of that, to make it even worse, and it's not about this, but one thing that I have realized about the secular world is that they give the musicians some type of recognition. Churches don't do that. They want you to play and go. The secular world, they will give you a drum solo where it's mm -hmm. just about you. Uh -huh. They will recognize you. They will put your name out there. They might even put you on their Instagram for a second. Like I, like, I have recently been seeing a lot of artists and this hasn't been a real thing all the time but like i have seen artists actually want to get close with their um with their band i'll give one, one prime example justin bieber part of the reason why they are always there is because he values them aside from the pay that they're getting and i know they're getting paid right <laughs> he values them he puts yeah. them on their social media he talks about them all the time he actually made it a consistent thing to where he's not just flying through musicians that is family yeah. like real family they party together they talk together they live together they laugh together like that is a real thing and it's that is one of the worst things that churches do not have is the relationship. Like a lot of people don't know they pastors. Yeah. A lot of people don't know they pastors. I'm not asking you to invite everybody to your crib. I'm asking yeah. you to have a relationship with me. And a lot of the issues that the church has is that most people are having issues and they're not loving them through it. Or even trying to figure out if they got any issues. Nine times out of ten, they trying to figure it out so that it could be more drama and then kick you out. There, there's no there's no real pastoring for musicians. Musicians is always in the background, not only 
from a musical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint. There is, I have been prayed for by very, very few people on drums. Stop everything they're doing to come pray for me. I shout out to Pastor YPJ. This is the first time I've ever, uh, no, this ain't the first time I heard him preach, but this is the first time that I figured out, like, like I always thought he was a good preacher, but I knew he was a real man of God. This was an intimate uh, camp joint, um, like little getaway with the church that I went to. They invited Pastor YPJ. He preached. It was a great word. He started praying over people. I'm on an electric kit, just playing, just flowing while they're doing everything they're doing. Stop everything he was doing to come over there and talk to me and pray over me for 10 to 15 minutes. Took his time. Mm. And everything that he said was spot on. There are not a lot of pastors that actually take time to do that. To this day, I call him Unc. He'll respond to my DMs. He's a pastor that I barely know as a person. But the fact that I can actually, like, talk to him. Like, if I came to him with issues, I really feel like he would actually talk me through it. Because at the end of the day, like, that moment that he took time to actually, like, pour into me was everything that I needed to know that I could trust him. And a lot of musicians cannot trust their pastors. Because at the end of the day, they don't know them. They don't have no real value in them. And they show it. And it's not just from money, but it has everything to do with everything else. Because a lot of churches have that issue where they think, like, it's just supposed to be you come in and play and be done. And then they act and all confused while your life is jacked up. Everybody's, yeah. life is, everybody's life is jacked up just as much as yours is. You just don't want to say it. And it's not publicized. But at the end of the day, everybody got issues. We all was born on this earth with sin. Jesus died on the cross for the very sin that you're about to commit in five minutes. And at the end of the day, that is a lot of musicians' issue. They don't have no real accountability. They don't have no real love around them. People don't even know how to receive love anymore because there is no type of love given to anyone for them to understand what it looks like. Yeah. And I feel like that is the lack that not only musicians, but really just our generation has just been dealing with for a very long time now. Like, but just going back to musicians, like, I feel that that's the reason why people go to the secular world. It may not even be to be what they actually need, but they're being given some type of love. Mm -hmm. And that's all they and that's all they're going to take it, because at the end of the day, we were never created to be alone. God literally created Adam and looked at him and was like, it's not good for a man to be alone and brought a companion, not just a female, but a companion. And at the end of the day, the way that I see it is as effed up and jacked up that their situation happened, they lived for a very long time and they were still together, mm -hmm. which means they were encouraging each other. Even through all of that, God was still loving them through everything. And I feel like that's why they were able to stay together for so long because they lived for, I can't remember what the Bible says. It was a long time. It wasn't, no, uh, it wasn't 100 years. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't 100 years. I just found that out. I was like, bro, like these mods were living a thousand years. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I, I really do believe that, like, if we could get a hold of loving our musicians just as much as you're loving the people that's giving to you in front of you, like, if that value was set, like you said, half of these musicians, half of these artists would not be doing secular music right now. Yeah. Yep. Chris Brown specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have been saying this for a very long time. Like they're like 90% of these people that are secular artists now were Christians. Like it's, real talk. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, ain't nobody gonna talk about it though. Ain't nobody yeah, gonna talk about it. Ain't nobody gonna talk about it. That's that's the next time we two hours and twenty five. <laughs> Look, it's good this stuff. is a good conversation though. It's a good uh, conversation. Speaking of relationships, and this is uh, I, I've been I, I'm gonna mean to ask you about this. Uh, what was it like playing behind Brian Karn in the height of his trash and musician days? I'm telling you, on the height of 
what what is he doing? <laughs> like all of that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I man, I was at Richard Hinton's church when he preached that one time. I was praying for the drop. I was praying. <laughs> and he was looking back. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Brian Kahn was one of the very few people that actually cared about me. Oh, but you you just you're the gifted. That's what that is. <laughs> like that's what that. But is. here's the crazy thing, and this is where I was talking about earlier. Brian invited me inside of his offices after church. Ah. He would actually he would actually have a conversation with me. He would actually ask me questions like, "Well, how's this going? How this is going?" He's not perfect. Let's just make this very clear. He's not perfect. And he went, went off on me during services. Let's just make this very clear. <laughs> I'm not talking but, about it. <laughs> but, but, but here's the funny part. <laughs> it was different for me because I took him as a joke. Okay. Because I okay. knew him. Because I knew him outside of that church mentality. I found out who he actually was. He's a musician. And he gonna know if you're wrong. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I, I, I hate to say it. But he know his stuff. Mm-hmm. That man knows his stuff. He know when you playing a wrong chord. He know when you effing up. Like I, I hate to say it, but he's picky. He is mm-hmm. absolutely picky. Yep. But I respect him because he's upfront about it. But he also created a relationship with me outside of that. He's actually, he's actually brought me in, had conversations, paid me even more. Like, and that's the part that nobody really knows about Brian. Like, Brian, he he, he can be a, he can be a lot sometimes. I, like, let, let's he can be a lot, but because like honestly, like that was my first gig because I didn't grow up on the church gigs or um, like the churchy stuff. Like, he's old school, old school. Like, his catalog goes back, mm-hmm. like before Christ back. Like, I don't know how he be knowing all these songs. But he be throwing songs out the wazoo. And I never know. I'm going I'm to be 100% honest with you. I don't be knowing them. Like that first gig, I was like, I don't know it, bro. And he would look at me. I'd be like, sorry, I don't know it. <laughs> and, he still, and he still paid me exactly what I was supposed to be paid. Because at the end of the day, like, he's, he's picky. And... um. I can honestly say the reason why it was I was okay for working with him because I actually had a good time. I actually enjoyed being around him. We would we would sit outside for hours after church and just talk and laugh. Nine times out of ten, talking about old records of basketball, and then just be laughing all day. He would actually come to the rehearsals and sit with us and talk and laugh like. I actually had a relationship with him outside of working with him. Now that ain't everybody's situation, but yeah. <laughs> I have gotten a different interaction with him. He's not perfect. And every day, like in, in the relationship of it, there'll be times he'll turn around and we both laugh at each other. Like he don't, he don't be going off on me no more. Like it was the first day. It was just like, I was like, and, mm-hmm. and, and I will say, that um, shout out to Brian Pettis, the MD. He gave me the opportunity to do it, but he was such an amazing MD that he guided me through all of it. Even the frustration of him being mad. He he helped me to be able to deal with him. That's the one and on that viral clip that don't don't do the ba bump ba bump bump. Nope. That's not him. Oh, 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 he's a character. Oh, that's uh, not him. Uh, <laughs> that's that's one of his old praise and worship leaders. Okay. Now, so Brian Pettis is the person that brought me on to Live in Word when I first started playing in the main sanctuary. Then, um, then he moved to Charlotte and started working with Brian Karn, and that's how I got the Brian Karn situation. Okay. And um, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Brian coached me through it all. Brian Brian Karn had respect for Brian Pettis, and then on top of that, over time, it just became a thing of like. I found out what he was looking for. And once I figured out what he was looking for, it didn't matter if I messed up. Like, he didn't care. As long as I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, and this is the part that most people know, don't know. 
It don't matter if you don't know the song. Come in when he starts. <laughs> that's, that's, bro, that's literally all it is. Brian wants to feel it every single time. Like, he won't come. Like, bro, just smack him. Like, it don't matter if you're wrong. Like, he wants to feel it every single time. And everybody is so timid because they don't want him to turn around. And that's wow. that's really all it is. Because, like, like I said, I don't be knowing none of them hymns. Mm-hmm. And if I get it wrong, they'll let me know. Or he'll turn around and he'll smile and laugh and be like, what are you doing? I'm like, ah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> because we, we created a relationship to where not only did I start to learn what he was looking for, I actually got to know who he was. He invited me to his house to eat dinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually have a real relationship with him. I haven't played with him recently. But, um, yeah, to answer your question, like, Brian Karn is actually a very, very genuine person. Most people don't know that. But the only thing that comes up is the viral stuff. That yeah. don't happen as often as people think it does. Like, like, like let me make I, it very I fell clear. Because I, I, was, I was waiting on it. At yeah. <laughs> no, nah, like people, people <laughs> think that he just be going off all day, all night. Like the man is actually oily. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he got some issues just like anybody else. <laughs> But oily. the man is oily. Tony, oily. Hey man, see, I can't even. <laughs> That's I can't the worst even, one today. I can't, I can't even say. I can't even say sanctified words. LGBTQ. Say I yes. A B C D. My bad. Oily. Grease down. Moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> Lubricated. Glory to God. <laughs> <gasps> We're in pride, my everyone. Anyways, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 my take on it, and that's why I was saying what I was saying earlier. Like, regardless of whatever situation you're in, most pastors do not invest time and value into their musicians. That's why I could actually deal with him because he actually paid me money. Sometimes he even paid me more than he was supposed to. I got to I got to spend time with him on top of being able to just have a good time. Like everything wasn't perfect. Some of them people was getting on my nerves in that church. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say, I ain't going to say a couple words, but there was this one guy. He hated that. I wear it hats. Take the cap off. I'm like, (laughs) every time, every time I'm there, every time I'm there. And CJ Thompson was working there too. And he know, (laughs) he know, (laughs) But like I, I genuinely just had a good time there because I, I had a great MD. Um, Brian, shout out again to Brian Pettis. That is my brother. Um, yeah, he was able to guide us through everything, and we just all had a good time, bro. Like on and off the platform, and that's why that's why I was never like condoning anything anybody was saying because at the end of the day the only thing that they see is those four minute clips that man be in them churches for three plus hours that don't be happening all day it don't he he has his moments but that's just who brian is and i've accepted it and just like i said earlier like we're met he has an expectation he wants me to sacrifice on certain aspects and he did the same. We met, and that's why I can respect him because not only did he put value in me from a financial aspect, he actually got to know who I am. He's actually like sold into my life, like my family's life. Like I've I've seen him do it. So yes, yeah. To answer that question. Well, yeah, that's okay. So yeah, we, I'm done with the questions. I, I'm <laughs> <even> <laughs> We did, we did a lot, and that, that's good. That's good. Hey, um, good content, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to. We go. We we gonna do this. Try not to laugh. That's what we are gonna do. Let's do it. Let's and, do uh, it. I'm a. Uh, let me see. This is what I'm looking like. Nah. How do you? Let me remove. I guess we're gonna wait on him to come back. Thank you. Think he canceled himself. You could you couldn't there hear me. He is. You couldn't hear me. Oh, you disappeared. Oh no, I was trying to like just 
keep you on this is the second time i'm using this streaming thing <laughs> Oh, we learned it again. Yeah, you know, yep. as soon as your screen disappeared, your voice disappeared. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah. Okay, so oh, we yeah. just gone. Okay, so what is okay? That's what this is. Okay, all righty, all righty. Let's keep it right there for now because half the green Ooh. screen. Was... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me add this. I'm just gonna throw this clip at you and just you know, just straight faced it, but I you gonna. You gonna fail anyway, so I am. I'm gonna try my best not to. I'm gonna try my yeah. best not to. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> like, <all right. laughs> it's all the right. white creases. It's the white creases. Right? The hairline for me, dog. <laughs> Y'all niggas are stupid, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Here we go. All right, here we go. All right, all right, all right. Let's let's see here. Bishop goes off on the reporter, which is Jason in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> here we go. Chicken mm -hmm. was not available uh, for the revival I was running, and uh, I had to order Context. from the Hooters, which is now no longer in business. Uh, well, really? Over in my in my area, they're not there. Really. Well, not there. Do you still keep in touch with the young lady? No, I don't believe in that. Uh, the mothers go out to get the women. I don't do that. That's mm. not what I'm. I'm not called to the to the women of the church. I'm called to to the body of Christ. So, Bishop Bosley, we have not seen you for a while. How has it been pastoring in a pandemic? I'm um, just about the same as uh, Moses was in the wilderness, pastoring all the heathens that I forgot that God had delivered them. That's my problem with my congregation, and not any real preacher is going through the same thing. We're dealing with a group of folk who forgot that God was good in the first place. So um, a lot of them don't come to church. Um, you have know, you been doing pastoring uh, virtually? I have. Yeah, I did that for a little bit, a little bit, but uh, it messed with my spirit. I wasn't able to really keep my eye on the folk. I had to really trust in prayer and intercessory, but um, I needed. He didn't oh, call sorry. me to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's all right. I... Most people don't when they do. <laughs> Look at the screen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to laugh. But... It's all right, sir. I'm now. I'm wrong. Oh, I'm real. All right, all right, I'm yeah, real. Yeah. You probably used to Joel right. Osteen and all the nice ones. Well, let's not name drop. I'm cutting that out. By the way, it's um, okay. Most people cut it... out what I say. <laughs> 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 didn't even, <laughs> we didn't cut none of that out. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you. you, put, you I did my best. Yeah, I, did my best. I did my best. I did my best. You oh that. Jesus! <laughs> oh, that was. Y'all are idiots, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah that you pretty much got that. But, oh Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with most of my congregation? That hey, bro, that had me weak. Oh, oh man! All right, so we're gonna talk about this drum off. Uh, let's start from the beginning. I think you said a while ago that you. How many times did you compete in the drum off? I want to say three or four times before. Three I won. to four times. I want to say. It's between two to two to four. I can't remember off the top of my head. I wanted okay, let me think. First time I did not get past my city. Really? Second time, second and third time, if I'm not mistaken, I got to the one right before state. One of them was a cheat. Okay. And a and another one was was one of the homies, if I'm not mistaken. And then I, I want to say that third or fourth time is when I went all the way. And that was the year that I almost quit. You almost quit? I almost quit. Because that was when, that last year, it was me, Josiah, Maddox, Wendell Lowe, I think a couple other people 
they picked this guy that was playing double bass drum the entire solo mm. over any of us. After that, I I convinced myself that this was rigged. Okay. And I did not want to do it. My wife, which was my girlfriend at the time, convinced me to keep going. So what I did was I took everything that I learned because I invested in the Octopad myself, which is, a, which is what a lot of people did not do. I okay. invested in one myself, got a hard drive, got everything on there, and took it to the places where I wanted to uh, play. So I had like 10 patches of different things that I was going to do. And this year was like, a mash of like all the years that I brought together. So like, that wasn't just something that I just came up with over the, on the spot. Like this was like years worth of like different, um, different parts and segments and transitions that I went over and studied with everybody else that used the Octopad. Like I, I thought through this stuff. Like this wasn't something that just like, just came out my butt. Like this is like years worth of like trying to figure this out. Okay, yeah. I mean, it it showed <laughs> for sure. It definitely showed. So, hey, so okay, do you by by any chance know who won the years that you didn't make it? Like, for example, the one that did double bass, do you know who won that that whole drum off that year? I did them consistently. So, it was the last couple years before I won. So whatever, whoever won before that. So what, Sharik? Uh, okay. Crap, I can't remember his name. He was with Josiah. Um, you don't see him often on drums anymore. I cannot remember his name. I think that, it was J. I think it was JP. No, JP was a little a couple years before that. Yeah. Uh, so, is that the? I think is that Mark? The uh, Mark the was Pearl? the last year. Mark was the last year before me, before they okay. ended it. Oh, okay, yeah. I know who you're talking about that. Yeah, so. Dreadhead. I can't remember his name right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I know who you're talking about. Uh, he got a video on uh, Drum Bass Keys channel. I know mm -hmm. who you're talking about. Yeah. Dang. Um, but yeah, um, I want to yeah. say it was Sharik, him, and somebody else. I can't remember. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been yeah. a minute since I watched drum off videos. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, you know, it's going to be Sweetwater videos. <laughs> so, <laughs> Glory, Glory yeah, to like, God. Because <laughs> I don't know what. Never mind. No shade, but hey, <laughs> freedom of speech, country, y'all. Amen. Just remember that. Amen. Send her what you're doing. You fell off. Bottom line, you fell off. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> you fell off. <laughs> there you go. That's the, look. <sighs> But uh yeah, so when it comes to this, like you so you won and like did you did you get a choice to like pick your endorsers or was that the endorsers that just came to you? Mm -mm. So basically whoever whoever was a part or under uh Guitar Center, which is obviously all the companies, like the mainstream companies, you get to pick between those companies and you get a contract of one year to be with them. And if they decide to keep you, they decide to keep you. So obviously what DW, Yamaha, Tama, um, Pearl, and then Remo, Evans, Promark, Vic Firth, Sabian, Lionel, Zildjian. I think those were... I think those were the ones that you got to pick from, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So they invite you to NAM, and they pay for everything. Um, okay. And um, yeah, they take you to each company. Y'all have a conversation, and they present to you what they're trying to what they're trying to do. And um, yeah, you get to pick who you want to go with, and you get a year year worth. But also that comes with it is you get a custom kit of your own with whatever company that you go with. And so then, is that that purple one you got? Yes. I like Galaxy. Okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, and they go. and they went above and beyond. That was not what that was not what was supposed to be on my drums. One of these days I'm gonna actually like sit down and like show everybody like the amount of effort that they put into them drums. It was just supposed to be like some star stickers on that joint. Like they oh. made like like they went above and beyond for me. 
So like that kit is like it's it's it was it was an upgrade from me getting my PDP kit. Like my dad actually took time and got a kit that was like worked for me. Like mm-hmm. to this day, that kit is goaded. Like to this day. So yeah. Yeah, that that's yeah. Um that galaxy kit is special because they actually put like they hard into that joint and it's killer. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a really dope kit. Oh, and actually, funny story. The kit that I'm playing is the same wood. Okay. Which is why I ended up taking the uh the wood that I got because that kit felt great. I didn't have to tune a thing. Like them drums felt amazing. So aside from the high have fallen, yeah. Okay. All righty. Uh, yeah. This this. Hold on. Let me. Ooh. That snare. <laughs> Old faithful. This part here. <laughs> Where'd you get the sounds for that? Funny story. The Octopad does not let you put anything in it. This was all in there already? That is stock sounds. And here's where it gets interesting. And this is what people don't know about that Octopad. I studied, studied that joint to figure out what the heck everybody was doing. You can stack stuff on that Octopad. So, like, if you want, if you want double sounds, you can put double sounds on there. If, if I'm not mistaken, there is a way to trigger it a different way to, like, if you hit it a certain way, it may change. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong. But, like... Yeah, like I sat down with that joint and figured out what the heck I was gonna play. Like I was going through them sounds, bro. Like wow. and then to make and then to make it crazy though, it felt it felt amazing in the house there. Like you can hear it like even through my headphones, like I can hear like how loud it was, but they made sure you could hear that octopad. So it wasn't it wasn't a thing of like, oh yeah, it's in there. Like it sounded like a band was playing with me type situation. Like they made sure that joint was right. They that's, bro, that sound system was killing, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. The joint was smacking, bro. Dang. So how hard was it for you to while you were doing what you was doing with your right hand, pause, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> How hard was it for you to switch to those sounds? It's a practice. Okay. It's a practice, which is why I said earlier, like, this is literally like years worth of like figuring out transition, when to mm-hmm. move over and touch it. Cause like Paul's, um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I felt it. Paul. Um, <laughs> um, yes, this was years worth of figuring out transitions. And then over time, like it just got easier. Um, mm-hmm. like just like just switching over. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, we gotta finish this that that <laughs> down down. down to us. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
up. times man good times Lord, have mercy god <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to know something very funny about the drum off a lot of people were so frustrated because they couldn't get in and i feel like the reason why i won was because the work that nobody knows that i put in like i actually went to the website so here's the funny thing the website Guitar Center, when the drum off was happening, they told you everything. They told you all the rules. They told you everything that the judges look at. And the funny thing is, they tell you during during the drum off as well. Like every single joint, they tell you like, "Hey, you're getting you're getting points for this, 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 and this." And a lot of people have lost because they neglect certain things. Uh, so like, I studied studied the rules. So when when th this year that I won, I made sure that I did every single criteria that they were looking for. And one of the criteria that a lot of people did not get into was interacting with the crowd. A lot of people just wanted to share. A lot of people just wanted to show off that they didn't need the Octopad to do it. And it's just like, yo, that Octopad was actually your, your go-to to get a gig for a two-year tour. It had yeah. nothing to do with the fact that like that's your ticket in to win. It actually had everything to do with the fact that you're playing in front of every single famous artist in LA. LA. The drum off literally almost got me a gig that I knew I wasn't prepared for. I literally got pulled to the side during them that year. And they was like, yo, I want you to do this two year tour for me. I didn't know. I didn't know triggers at the time. I was like, bro, I'm not even finna try. Like I know I'm not ready for it yet. And at the end of the day, like a lot of people don't know that, but like a lot of people that blew up was not because of just like the drum off, but like there were things that happened after that that they were able to be entrusted with that I was not prepared for, that some were. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Let me tell you a little backstory on like while you were killing right there. <laughs> it was me. I'm pretty sure the other few people that sat there watching that and didn't want to look at their drums for a while. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I got church the next day. I don't feel like playing these drums. <laughs> Just let you know on on your side, oh, there's another side. On, <laughs> we sitting. I, hold up. Let me show you. Let me show you what happened after we saw this video. Oh God. Let me let me let me, let me pull it up. Oh, oh God. So, <laughs> I don't oh, have. God. Let's see. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. Because uh, after this, I, I I couldn't. Me and some friends of mine, we 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 lost our mind. <laughs> we got obsessed. Uh, let's see. Filters channel. Let me pull up my old old channel. My very first YouTube channel with a thousand subscribers. How many, how many channels you got, bro? Uh okay, so this this was actually this was um Alexander Raspberry's channel. Mm -hmm. And I he let me upload some videos on here. This nice. channel right here was my brother Justin Bishop Bosley's channel back in two thousand nine. Glory. He, right. he forgot his password. Yeah. But before he forgot his password, he like stopped using it, and then I started uploading on it. 
but he forgot his password. I was locked out of this channel for five years. Five. <laughs> he didn't press forgot password and redid it. But he forgot his <laughs> e recovery email password. Yeah. So yeah. So Oof, that's that's a some, somehow he ended up remembering it. And then I got back on this and that was it was it. So uh that's wild. I'll tell you something. This is this is uh this is a quick you put like five seconds of this. It's a quick clip of Alexander Raspberry. I don't have mine because I played so horribly I deleted the video. But uh yeah, we would go to the church, turn all the lights off, turn the spotlights on, and uh -huh. just act like we had guitar center drum off. After the old freaking video, <laughs> we did this drug every day. <laughs> Honored, bro. Every That's hilarious. Day. I'm like, it's like this. this we 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 had our PDP. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm honored, bro. Yep, it's just ridiculous. Like we every single day. <laughs> But yeah, that's a shout out to Alex, man. But that, that's... Nah, I'm honored, bro. Seriously, like I don't take that stuff for granted, dog. Like I, I, I be forgetting how much my influence runs, and like, yeah, stuff like that reminds me, like, yo, like I'm grateful, bro. I'm beyond grateful to be an inspiration to somebody. Bro, Real talk. Yeah, that's Thank you, bro. it's. Yep, it was. It was bittersweet because I, I, yeah. I, I, I was sitting there like, you just, just, that's, yeah. You know, it just, oh, my God. It's, yeah, crazy, crazy inspirations and stuff. I, 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 I do have one last question. Let's do Mr. it. Mr. Tony Taylor Jr. Um, why do you keep looking to the left when you play? I, do, I, will, I have the receipts. You always look to the left for some reason. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out, like, is there always something to the left? Or okay. you want the honest answer? Yeah, we've been honest this entire time. Okay, yep. <laughs> it's a couple of things. Um, wow, I cannot believe I'm admitting this. Uh oh, hold on. <laughs> All righty. This is exclusive. Okay. Okay. You're in a safe. So, you're in a safe place, man. Okay. <laughs> so are we? Are we specifically talking about Uncle Larry's video? Oh yes, that's one. Of, of course, that's one of them. <laughs> of course, hold on. Of course, of course. There was a reflection mirror. I am very conscious, self-conscious about my image. I'm pulling it up for them to know what I'm talking about. We not finna do this. <laughs> we not finna do this. They finna know I, what I'm talking I about. I am very self conscious. I I have an aesthetic that I live by with drums. The way that I look, the way that my drums look, like I I am obsessed with the look of me and me playing drums as well as my drums. And a lot of times, if I can see what it looks like, I'm just going to look. I don't care. And it, it's, it's yeah. So y'all just got a deep, dark secret come <laughs> from. <laughs> Jesus <Yes>. Christ. Yes. <laughs> so Glory wait a minute. God. So is, is it on both of them? So the shed and when you were uh, doing the earth, wind and fire? Oh no, the earth, wind, and fire. Okay, so that I just like looking at my symbols on the left side. I don't know why. I just, I just like looking at them. I Say no more. Man. Say yeah. no more. We're pulling it up. Yeah. Right. We're pulling it. I'm just going to have it on pause. I'm just going to have it on pause. Like, 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 because we just can't. 
That okay. is so funny, bro. Yep. Where, where, is, where is this at? Oh, my God. I cannot Always, believe you asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally looking to the left. <laughs> what, what? I know somebody done uploaded this on the wrong quality. That ain't it. Where is his channel? There we go. There we go. Oh, oh now I got to go through all of his. He changed his channel to stock. Yeah, oh, I would I'm just, gonna... I would just go in stock or stock. I would go in the search bar and just look, look oh, up. I found like, it. Okay, cool. I found it. I appreciate your help. I, I found absolutely because <laughs> he got a crap ton of videos on stocks. Yeah, it's I was years talking, worth. I was talking to him, uh, um, like two years ago, back in 2020, mm -hmm. when he made the change, and I was like, "Yeah, I know for a fact your ad revenue spiked." Because when you talk about money, he said, "Yeah, oh, yep." That's why he consistently always talking about it. Yep. Uh, he the one that told me about getting paid on YouTube. I said, excuse me. Yeah, it's, it's it, they done uh oh here we go. You about to you about to look up. Yeah. <laughs> you about to look up. Let's see here. Thank you, shit. All righty. We got here Clemens. And we got Tony Taylor. And uh yeah, I'm just that you look to already <laughs> like real quick let's get into it that's one that, that, this this shell was crazy it was a great day bro I will say y'all had the better mixed drums though. I ain't gonna lie. I'm we had better. We had rented mics. Oh, okay. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Why I call Clemens? Like, it's like that's enough. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 not just that video. It's that uh, you did that quartet video back in the day. You was looking to the left. Um, but that's I the same thing. Look to, you, to the left. To left. <laughs> I just look to the left. Like I really so, and I it, it's dawning on me. Like it's one of those. Um, is one of those things you just don't think about. Like, I just like looking at my left side of crashes. I do typically like to look at the crowd to see what the interaction is, to see if I need to pull back or push forward somewhere. Like, I will say, like, I'm constantly looking around my surroundings to see, like, what atmosphere do I need to push? Like, is it set? Do I need to push a little bit more? Do I need to pull back? Am I in the way? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I think about that stuff a lot. So I will say... Like, it depends. I have different reasons why I may look. But, yes, nine times out of ten, it's either a reflection and I'm just like, okay, do I look stupid? Or, <laughs> it, oh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, I am. I, so, if anybody understands why my kits look the way that they look, because I... I, I, I need the aesthetic to look right. Wow, I cannot believe I'm admitting this. Right if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be honest the whole way. <laughs> yep. You got the brutal honest answer, brother. Appreciate Glory. it. You heard it here on the In and Out of Pocket Pocket. <laughs> God, I'm not going to. Oh, oh, man. People are going to talk about me for a long time now because they're going to have full context now. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Christ. Oh man. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. Glory to God. Ooh. Yeah. So <sighs> whenever you whenever you see 
You said, you, 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 said, you sitting there one day at TC, and I'm Pastor Mike Todd say, turn to the left. <laughs> oh, the topic of this. I'm Sometimes. nine times. I'm nine times out of ten looking at the camera angle if I see a camera nearby just to see what it looks like. I I, I am being too brutally honest right now. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Oh, this is gonna go viral. I know it is. Jesus Christ. This has been an ongoing conversation for decades now, and it's oh my god. I cannot believe I just gave full context to that. Oh my God. Why? To, yeah, that's the title. Why Tony Taylor always looks to the left. Yeah. So just be on the lookout for the collaboration and the tag. <laughs> so, <laughs> God, man. Yep. 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 Oh, man. So, uh, yeah. Guys, this has been the In and Out of Pocket Podcast with Josh Drum Class and the one and only Mr. Looks Left, Tony Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah. Hey, oh yeah, that's yeah. Um You know I do the cubic shuffle? Yes. Get real familiar with it. Cause mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> to the left, to the left, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't even listen to the right part. Oh my god! <laughs> yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Jeez! This was a great talk, man. I yeah, I, this was I, dope. This was dope. I needed this, and I know the world needed this. Podcast has become one of the number one things in life, and I feel like musicians need to hear this. It ain't a lot of podcasts that have like the right people following. I feel like this is gonna change somebody's life for real, for real, bro. Thank yeah, you for doing is, this. Hey, th- thanks for being on, man. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be. This is gonna be great. I need you guys watching to stay tuned and keep you know like to stay tuned to these podcasts because we're just gonna keep doing them they're here to stay so yes sir you, you got tune in um yeah so oh that you got anything you want to announce or you know you got any you got any um shows coming up you got anything left to say <laughs> already starting jesus christ i can see the comments now um i feel like we talked about everything bro yeah. i i love y'all um love you bro um thank you for allowing me to be a part of this this was something powerful this was something um revolutionary and i feel like this is um history being made for musicians i feel like there's about to be a turnaround and um i needed this yeah. I, I feel like somebody that's been watching needed this. This was great. And yeah. Yeah. Look, I said everything I'm, else I needed to say. <laughs> it was it was daytime in his window back there. <laughs> yeah, bro. The sun don't come down till about nine. I don't even know what time it is. My wife doesn't text me a couple times. <laughs> oh, oh Lord, oh Lord! Tell not her in I'm trouble. Sorry. Not in trouble. No, no, no. You're good, no. bro. My my daughter. My daughter's been. I, she probably could hear me because it's it's very echoey in our hallway because I live in an apartment and oh, my God. my apartment not too far. And, and she was saying like my my daughter's been asking for me. She's probably asleep by now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Yep. 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 Oh man, well, yeah, it's been a great one. So uh, indeed, yeah. bro. I don't never know how to end these. I, ain't, I it's just you know, <laughs> I've had a habit of the video just cut, going to the end screen. You know, let the Lord use you, brother. You got it. Yeah, we. I'm gonna end it like Bruce. Bruce. He just, it's just we done. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's it, y'all. Why y'all still watching? <laughs> Uh, all right man all right brother 